Hello pool fans and welcome to the world's greatest pool tournament. This is the Derby City Classic and is the 25th anniversary. Behind me, several hundred players competing in banks, one pocket, nine ball. In front of me though, it's all about 10 ball and playing on this five by 10 foot table. It's the Diamond Bigfoot 10 ball challenge and 16 of some of the greatest players on the planet. One of the toughest fields. Let me ask Derby City, are you ready for some great pool yeah they're definitely ready and hopefully you are as well round one action and time to meet the players first up he is a derby city straight pool champion jay swanson nine ball champion and derby city nine ball runner up sponsored by off the rail make some noise from dover ohio mad max max eberly and his opponent needs a little introduction. A U.S. Open champion, won every event here at the Derby and member of the Billiards Hall of Fame. Sponsored by Lomax and Paggy Lion. It's the Lion from Toronto, Canada, Alex Paggy Lion. We're lagging for the break. Our referee is Mr. Ricky Bryant and sending it up to the AccuStat Skybox. Ladies and gentlemen, pool fans everywhere, we have World Class 10 Ball coming to you now. Jeremy Jones is here to provide expert analysis, and I'm Mark Wilson. Jeremy, talk about what we should be looking for in this match. Well, as, as you said to me prior, um, two of the vets in the in the 16-man field here, two guys that have played in this event many times. Mad Max always seems to play really well in this event. Hasn't ever won it, but has, you know, made some made some little runs. Of course, AP has been on the charts in every event here in the Derby. And, should be a good one. The table yesterday, I think, was tough on the breaking end of things overall. But I think as the felt wears in a little bit more, we'll see a little bit, you know, a few more balls down and maybe a few more breaking runs. I measured the pockets myself this morning. They're four and a quarter inches. Oh, wow. However, with the new cloth and the brand new balls, the luster's not scuffed up, so they slip in there. So they probably play about like four and a half, which is not that big on a five by ten. And had this table been three months old, you'd really see some balls hanging up. But I'm surprised it's four and a quarter, really. Uh, uh, I was, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only did I measure it with my thing on my phone, but also I uh, put two balls up there. So yeah. I, I had to verify. I thought, boy, this can't be four and a quarter, but they are. You may see a different variety of breaks from these two players. I think Max is going to be pretty standard from the center. But, of course, Alex, Alex can play uh, a little more how he's feeling at times and play a little more tactical games than others. Uh, he got dipped in, but it was kind of his fault. He let the cue ball trickle to the side, and then something ugly came by. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we talked about that yesterday. And he t you know, there's some scratches that aren't your fault and some kisses that save you, but also if you get the cue ball roaming near the side, you're just kind of put it, putting the ball in jeopardy. You're pretty liable for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So Alex inspecting that four ball that's being dealt with at the moment. This is a race to 10. There's no jump cues. All ball fouls. 10 ball does not win on the break. We've seen the 10 ball come out hot a few times here. Yeah, no call shot here. Just like nine ball for the most part. And two guys that uh, will definitely play some two-way shots. One that's getting ball in hand. Maybe one of the best two-way players uh, we've ever seen. Alex has a tremendous cue ball control. And so um, part of it is that he's so pure at pocketing. His ball speeds are good. And then naturally his rotation background, playing 15-ball rotation. This is uh, just two-thirds of that. Yeah, I like him to play real well here. You know, Alex, one thing I think that if he's going to continue, you know, trying to get back to that where he was at one time, and I think he's very capable of it, I think he's got to watch his schedule a bit. He's a guy that gets around the globe a lot, and he's getting in the mid-40s now, and I think I think you got to schedule a little bit more of your traveling and whatnot to keep up with these youngsters. But uh, I think he has a lot of desire to have some big wins still in his pool career. 
he's always a crowd favorite because he's got that effervescent personality. He's engaging. He'll smile and laugh and cut up even during the match. And then when he gets down to business here, when he gets over the ball, <laughs> he's serious. Yeah, he's another one of those players that has so much knowledge. I think kind of like Corey we talked about yesterday a little bit that sometimes tries to make the game a little too easy, I think, and then and then what happens is you get away from really hitting the ball pure at times and um, hard to take away knowledge. But there's a fine line there, I think, Mark, and uh, I think you would agree with me that you still got to got to be looking there to execute. That's the main part of the game, really. Execution's never been his uh, shortcoming because he owns two maximums on a 6x12 snooker table, and he's represented Canada twice in the World Championship snooker which is on a 6x12 with smaller balls, so super firepower here. And I think it's like Jeremy said, it just comes to how much he's been playing in the uh, immediate uh, recent times. Yeah, well, and he's, you know, like you just said, the snooker, he's been playing some Chinese eight ball. You know, he's been, like I said, globe trotting quite a bit. And he's a guy that can play all games, of course. We can see that's evident in the rafters here at the Derby. But, uh, but again, I think you have to be pretty focused on one discipline or another just to be able to compete with all the great players in the different disciplines that we have. He's going to have a t He didn't even take the bridge down. Yeah, he's, he knows this is going to run a little. Yeah, he's going to need it again. Now, playing snooker really makes you adept with the bridge. And I, I was surprised. I own a 5 by 10 but during the pandemic when I played on there, I used to think I was good with the bridge because we play on a, five, a four and a half by nine and it's not exposed. On my five by ten, I found out I'm not good with the bridge. Yeah, well, so. quite the opposite with this young man. Or not young man, but ooh. Ooh. I just have rarely ever seen him miss with the bridge. In fact, I can't recall one. So Mad Max did not have to pay the ultimate price for that scratch on the break. Max, a long-time vet. He's won plenty of tournaments. Love to get him a real big one at some time or another. Just a great straight pool player. He's won some straight pool titles. and Of course, been just, uh, you know, I don't know what you want. Maybe a top 30 or 40 player in the world for a long time, it seems like. Yeah. He was living in uh, the west coast of Mexico. And playing on a 5x10 there every day. And that was about a year ago. And I think he subsequently has moved back to the States. But nevertheless, he's not afraid of the 5x10. Yeah, I think he was in Tijuana. That's where he was, or near there. Max got out quite a bit last year to some of the big events. Not only here in the States, but abroad. 1-0, Everly over Pagulain. Using the Accurac by Outsville. All the pros prefer this rack. The equity it provides. Now yesterday, when the table was super slick, those wing balls were not going four rails around, but they were coming well long, as you noted. So they were playing the balls right behind the one into the side pockets primarily. And you wouldn't say playing it, but I had a notion, you know, some of the breakers were making the one quite often. Uh, up in the corner, so Alex, whenever he, uh, he has a different breaks he can use, but his issue at times, he just gets a little quick with the transition, a little off with the timing, but he can sur certainly break them uh, when everything's right. Nice pop there, two balls short, kind of came across the one a little bit, that's why you saw the one came straight down the middle of the table more. Matt's may take a look at playing the eight. You'd have to hit the one ball very thin, or maybe you can't even hit the one ball. So that's no, you can't. That's okay. a great view we have there, and uh, it's going to be a tough little push out to to not give up a piece of the one uh, that leaves something simple just because the one's so covered up. So you can't push out to where it's really difficult to get at. 
maybe just a kick behind it in between the one eight. I don't know if he can get at that. Yeah, Alex is gonna quickly turn that back. And I was gonna say, of course, the veteran that Max is, I think you still gotta give a little edge to Alex, and that would be the case tactically over a lot of players, and not just uh, mm -hmm. not just Mad Max. <laughs> Max, he, he called, called it, but yeah. we don't need to call it. Looks like he's going to kick behind it, maybe. The kick behind it's not bad. You can go back into the eight with the cue ball. Got a bad hit. Yeah, that didn't. Oh. That's a foul. That's a foul. That's a foul. The referee's not getting the cue ball. This is odd. Yeah, Ricky, yeah. Okay, now he recognizes, yeah. Well, the first match, early second game. I don't think he thought there was much of a question on that. There was going to be a good hit. Uh, you know, after mm -hmm. a rollout, you kind of suspect a good hit. Even a referee can kind of take that for granted a little bit. So I think he was just getting a little confirmation from Max uh, that that was a bad hit. It certainly was. Whenever you're in doubt about a good hit or a bad hit, you can always tell based on how the physics of it. You can't always see it. <laughs> how the balls move will tell it. And I can see the eight ball went forward, which that wouldn't happen on a good hit. Yeah, so the way he shot it, looks like he was trying to maybe pocket the eight coming off the one, huh? Yeah. I, uh, if it, I, the I didn't speed think and it, everything? You know? I didn't think it was on because I thought Alex would have taken that on. He would, wouldn't think he would give up that shot. But. Well, maybe it wasn't on, maybe, even though yeah. he wasn't trying. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, we will not. never know, but we're going with it wasn't on at the moment. So, But I like Alex, you know, when he just gets into, again, I like this with all players, but they get in a little more flow. You're always going to try and play position, good position, especially a heady player. Um. But I really think to win the tournament, you got to get to where you can recover pretty easily. You're not too worried about a little out of line, and you're not always going to have a perfect cue ball. Another big shot with the bridge here. How's this speed? Just a little short, it looks like. And it's going to make things a little funny. He's not going to easily be able to hold it. And he's not going to easily be able to move it back over. Right. You're thick enough, you're going to have to pop it pretty good to go over and across. But it's too thin to hold. Yeah, so do you play for the heavier angle on a six to go back and forth like this? Oh. You see? Heady, yes. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get perfect there versus this. This was much easier to acquire. And like you said, he's now after going to transfer you know, two, two or three cushions. Side rail, side rail, side rail. Yeah, and it's, you know... I think uh, Tyler Steyer comes to mind when we really talked about that a lot, you know, working through a couple more shots versus trying to get it all back in one. And yeah. when you're so talented, it's easy to want to pull that trigger to get it back quickly. And the one thing, oh, you hit that thick to the pocket, that's going to hurt. Um, but the one thing it really does is it really improves your game when you start getting that extra work a couple balls because mm -hmm. you start to settle in and you realize that, you know, you can do that. Pool is so difficult. You cannot be one bit lazy. You, you're going to have to work through these, and that was a good decision. Now he hit the object ball thick, which took the pace out of the cue ball, or he would have been much better on the seven. Good recovery shot there. And you notice he didn't try to do anything special with the cue ball. It was just speed control and just make sure he gets that seven ball down. Yeah, this is an odd one. You wouldn't want to come all the way back down on this angle, I don't think. You may just get to the center. We'll see. You'd love to get all the way down, but you could end up somewhat behind the 10. Yeah, I like this play here. Real smart. And again, just work a little more. Uh, and, uh, you know. Didn't, didn't try to force something that wasn't there. Yeah. And then risk missing. And a little recovery. I think it's just a lot more of the game than people think. Overcut it. Yeah. And you oh, boy. So his bridge has not been good. He's probably used it four times and missed twice. Gifted this game to Max. 
Yeah, two fouls for Max as well. Scratch on the break in the first one and then a foul after the uh, push out. Going to get two on the board with two fouls. Not something you're going to see very often. Caught that a little thick, so he's going to have to make a little more of a shot. Not much. And you start mixing that talent with some work, boy, you really start to get something. Then uh, get a lot of hardware winning titles. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's devastating. And it was partly because he just didn't get good from the hanging ball. And I don't think he necessarily hit it real thick because you wanted away from the rail. I think he just, the speed control was off. But he yeah. got funny on that angle. And if you watch more of the misses in day one and early here in day two, it's almost always been the overcut. Uh, the new felt, I think, just uh, cuts a little cleaner. Not much friction at all with the new balls and everything. And I've always um, changed my shot line. Like yeah. if I played in the Moscone, you know, I always had a little thicker shot line just because I always felt like the balls cut a little easier. Because mm -hmm. I didn't see a bad stroke there from Max or anything. It wasn't, you know, pretty it, good delivery. I, I got to tell you, uh, that's the difference of the 5 by 10 That goes in on a 45 by 9 he didn't butcher it, but right. he didn't hit it real clean. He didn't hit the heart of the pocket, and the extra you know foot to the pocket there takes its toll. But that's a major unforced error. Look at Alex; he's got the bridge out. He's <laughs> prepping that. Now we saw Corey Duell last night just break with the bridge throughout the match, and then later on he came up with a shot and used the bridge for a bridge shot. You know, so he actually deployed it properly. Yeah, I you, talked to, you mentioned that. I was talking about that this morning. Sorry, sorry, Mark. I, I talked to Corey this morning about it, too, and he said he, what he likes about it is it's very stable, and his cue is always exactly the same height. He doesn't have to stack his bridge hand to get the tip where he wants it. And so he says he just feels like he gets a degree of consistency, and so uh, Corey is a contrarian, and he's not <laughs> conventional, and he has his own thoughts, and you're not going to dissuade him. And, and I have seen him deploy it. Uh, breaking with the bridge quite effectively at times. So, Well, to be fair, I mean, I expected some that weren't that good, but he did have three or four that were really good. Uh, so, But the problem to me was when he didn't hit him well, how much different, how much fall off he had on that break uh, with spin and the one barely passing the side, you know. So He said the difference was that he hadn't prepped his break like that on the 5 by 10 and he said, for the nine-footer, he's pretty good. And I have seen him use it on a nine-footer, and damn, he's pretty damn good at it. Yeah. But he said that the extra distance cost him, and he wished he would have had a little bit more time to dial in. And, uh, Corey's an enigma. I mean, don't try this at home, folks. This is a trained professional. You know, I mean, he's a smart yeah, guy. I mean, so. you know, it's like some of those golfers that hit it a mile. You know, some, some days they hit it in the trees, and they win, win it when they hit it in the fairway, right? And they go ahead and win the tournament, and, you know. So win some, lose some in that regard. Max aiming downward. He'll get flat. He doesn't want to hop on the cue ball. Pretty good break there. Is the four ball going to find it? It does. And yeah, really awkward to cut at. If he's a lefty, I think he goes here. But being a righty, I don't know. Not a hard cut shot. I mean, it's not easy, but for these guys, being close to it. Yeah. It's kind of cut. You can go up and down the table, try and get in the center. But, again, being the righty with the eight ball there, I doubt he shoots. Right. You're bound up on your body unless you want to shoot with the bridge. Or maybe he's nimble with left hand. Maybe he's – okay, let's see. No, he's playing safe. You just knock it away and hold behind the five because no jump cue. Just keep it simple like that. How's his speed? He's going to leak this. This is going to leak a little bit. I don't know if he got – the snooker here or not. In fact, I'm pretty sure he didn't. But I don't mind the simple play overall. You know, he hasn't spent a lot of time at the table. He's got a couple game, a game on his side, but uh, mm -hmm. really hasn't shot a lot. The only other safety I saw was maybe coming behind the eight, trying to put the one on the side rail. Did get the snooker a little bit. Q in the back elevated. Well, if he wants to, the six goes in the side if he doesn't want to play this in the corner. 
easily play the combination. It's just controlling that object ball if you miss. You may see Alex kind of mess with the 6-9 here. The 3 goes in the side, so you can handle a lot on the 2. You don't have to go into it much, just a little flick. I think it's worth it. Going into it just, like I said, lightly. Like that. Good speed there. That opened up the 6 and makes it real easy to get position on. Yeah, I was, again, uh, talked about it yesterday when you open balls. You know, you think about a lot of foot speed. You know, you're just hitting them a little bit, you know, unless you have three or four together or the other one is if they're on the rail, you may think a little more speed because you get a lot of double kisses with the rail there and whatnot when you're opening balls. But overall, when they're out away from the rail, you don't have to do a whole lot to get a little separation. Yeah. I like what I'm seeing from Alex as far as though, uh, you know, between the ears as far as not really trying to pick the rack apart. You know, these are fairly open, of course, and we'll see him use that brain. But again, when he just gets back into that, you know, swing in the cue mode, I think that's when he gets a lot more back in stroke quickly. I always admire how Alex sets in there really quiet and really locks in before there's any cue motion whatsoever. He makes sure it locks down on the name, and then it's a very slow, straight backswing. The one thing that's very peculiar, he's one of the only pros that plays with his right hand behind 90 degrees. You almost never see that hand straight up and down like other pros. And it's awkward to play like that because you get so much more length between the tip and your grip hand. So you have to be, you know, well versed at doing it because it distorts your timing. But uh, he's uh, fantastic. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, so yeah, clearly start it at works. a young age, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and some shots like right here, it's just back barely past ninety degrees, and and then some. Actually, Dennis Akulo was a ooh man. But that was kind of like that shot. He didn't have a lot of angle to move it there. Now he did play for a lot of angle on the eight, which was nice, but didn't expect that miss. It looked like he tried to use a little bit of inside to check up the cue ball off that first rail so it didn't arc backwards, but then he wasn't committed to it and got just a little bit abrupt on his transition. And then now the miss, because it was a miss by a good proportion. It wasn't an aiming error. That was an execution error. Yeah, and Max has gotten pretty out of line here from distance. And One thing Max has when you know the nerves get going a little bit, that's settled down now a little bit. Sometimes he can get a little more of like a wind-up into the swing. Uh, he usually gets a hold of it and settles it down, but here early, pretty amped up. In between her here, I tell you, it's hard to roll this in, and or not hard to, but not how you want to shoot it to hold for the nine. Right. If you miss, you definitely want to overcut it. He didn't hit it good at all. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know, it's amazing how people's strokes change because it wasn't long ago I went back and watched Alex when, uh, I say it wasn't long ago, six, eight months ago, I was kind of going YouTube, watching pool, and Alex came up with his world nine ball title, which I was there in person, but kind of interests me to go back and look at the players and his, his swing is definitely different than it was uh, back then and, and not all the time. Um, just a little shorter overall than it used to be from shot to shot. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing a pretty messy rack, and sometimes you have to learn to win ugly, you know, and this this would be that rack right here because it's, it's a big game difference here. Yeah, and this is the table to make it. Uh, you know, that happened to everyone at, at some time or another. Nice shot. Pool, you know, has taken off so much. There's so much interest and so much, so many fans and people that you know want to watch things. And players are doing a lot of stuff besides playing all the time. You know, they're building their brain in different ways and a lot of YouTube stuff and whatnot. But 
sometimes you got to realize you got to spend a lot of time at the practice table as well. Okay, messy wreck goes to Peggy Lyon, two to one in front. Two years in a row, Alex won the one pocket division here. And I, I suppose you were here, but it was amazing. He would, in the one pocket, it was just eight and out, eight and out, but it would be a hard opening shot. He would make it and get position, and then thereafter, he was never a threat. He was in line the whole way. It was the most routine. And you have to really be pocketing the ball as well to get the ball speed so you get on those angles and those little breakouts. And he did it all. It was just, it was evident that this guy was destined to win. <clears throat> well, yeah, when it comes running to one hole, and he's got to watch the break now. He'll be told it's got to be behind the line completely, which is a really good rule. That way there's no gray area. But he's really one of the best ever as far as running the balls to one pocket. And not only a great brain, but he spent a ton of time you know, developing that, and it pay, has paid off a lot in his one-pocket career, that's for sure. Great break, and then right there, the eight tangled up on the one, so probably going to be a push-out circumstance. I don't know if he's got a little edge of this to where he can just float this above the two-five. Trying to come near that side pocket he's standing by. That's what I would try to do. Edge the one, hold it behind the eight, try and use the two and the eight. If you try to go all the way back down, it may be difficult to hold everything. Oh, that's a great shot. That is. He had a little more than we thought. Yeah, and a little less angle than we thought, too, because, uh, you know, that ball could come pretty tight, right, from behind it there on the one. <laughs> Max is been informed you don't have to call it now of course there is the looking at it like you don't have to call it so do I kick this with a lot of speed right here trying to get maybe maybe mm -hmm. a little fortunate it's kind of a hard one to predict anything safety wise if you go high ball here you can definitely get it in behind the one the scratch he's going to love this Overall, I think. Yeah, I don't think the one three is playable. It's close. It's yeah. It's not easy for sure. I think I actually just hit the edge of the one and come around the the four ball and get back down table. Yeah, but you just don't want to leave an open one, even though you do give a distance. I mean, pretty easy return safety with the ten and four and all that there. Okay, move the one over. How crafty is that? Kind of knowing that was going to happen as well. Good job there. Really good. Doesn't look like the one or the cue all is really going to hold there. Oh, he can see a piece of it. That helps. Nice shot. <laughs> now Alex is calling. <laughs> He's kicking for the quarter, he says. Well, he probably saw Max call it a couple times and said to himself, man, I thought it was no call shot, but Max definitely knows what's going on. So <laughs> yeah, he was trying to hit it to where he could hold it, maybe get some kind of separation. Well, that's why he introduced side spin. He didn't have to have the side spin to hit the one, but he was trying to get the cue ball to stay on that side, and that allowed him to kind of guide down into the one rather flat at the one so that the cue ball didn't come down table as much. You're exactly right, Mark. Big shot for Max, I think, early. Get a little, a, a nice flowing stroke going. Feel a good one. Good shot. Good shot. Catch a piece of the three here. Just gotta watch it coming by one rail. 
Ooh. Yeah. Catches a little piece. It could have got awkward. Well, he kind of overcut the two ball. I think <laughs> that in, uh, helped to get the cue ball slightly closer because it didn't arc quite as quickly. Yeah, the two definitely was on the extreme side of the pocket. Now good measuring up just to reach this. Wants a little bit of a cut, of course. That way you can come with two rails at the five. It's got to be a little concern on the five. You don't want to be short with the eight there and have a lot of angle to get back on the six. This is perfect. Now he needs to be aggressive here and come on down past the side two rails. Maybe checks it with a hair of inside. We'll see. Maybe just straight. Pretty darn good there. Yeah, as long as you're close to it, right? With the eight there, if you happen to fall straight, you could fall underneath uh, the six. You could draw the ball back. Now you can go one rail above, which is nice. I guess he's going twice. I would probably just play the eight in the same pocket. Yeah, I like that. Real good shot there. Perfect angle now. Looks like you can just go forward one rail and then let it release from the rail and go at the nine. Looks Maybe he doesn't have that. Maybe the side pocket's in the way, so he's drawing. Now he's coming across his line, but perfect speed control. talked about uh, Alex being a little past 90 degrees. Alec, uh, Max is usually just a hint in front of 90 degrees, which is much more common. All right, a couple messy games. Our score is tied 2-2. Two to two. Yeah, Ricky Bryant giving both of them the one. You don't have to call the shots, <laughs> I guess. What's it about? Nathan Childress, table 22. Nathan Childress, 22. You're on the clock. Coming to you from here in Louisville, the Indiana side of Louisville. Very cold outside. Pretty warm where we're at, though. Jeremy said it was even a little stuffy. Just at the beginning, right? Now we got the ventilation going good. We got a little adrenaline up here watching these guys. Coffee's kicking in. We're good. <laughs> Jeremy's my roommate. He doesn't always get home right at the uh, when it turns dark and the street lights come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't get to get out much at home, you know, so. Him and I both like to play poker, too. And he played some banks and hit yeah. some balls last night. Yeah. A bevy of activity goes on late hours here. I know you and I are going to play. We talked about playing a little bit last year, but it didn't happen maybe this year on this 5 by 10 before they move it out. Which will happen in a few days. This will end. They'll bring in for the finals of the banks or towards the end of the banks. Yeah, Monday night after the finals, this table gets moved out and the nine-footer comes in. Uh, he's overcut it. And he's using, it was trying to use the eight, which I think was totally correct. But again, what's the miss? The overcut, right? And... Uh, hmm. And just speaking from experience, you know, this table's starting to get a little broken. Of course, the balls and everything in prime condition. A little more light. Lighting on the table, I think everything just cuts a bit easier. Tricky little shot to get from the three to the four. Not terrible, but 
He's got to get good shape on the three coming off the two ball. Does he go between the four seven here? I mean, this is odd. Just kind of pull it up the side rail, you know, try and get his yeah. shape as quick as you can. It's not a neat, it's a very narrow window here. Alex is a master of these. And he, he also plays position in such a way that he doesn't hook himself trying to get perfect position either. He's going with a high ball. He here. might be going two cushion side rail, side rail. It's a thick nope. hit, yeah. Uh oh. This is the problem. Big trouble. Yeah. Big trouble. Anytime you have to stun the ball. You have to, or draw the ball, let's say. You have to get yeah. into the ball a little bit to carry the what you're trying to do to the object ball. And if the speed's off a little bit, it's not like a rolling ball where you really feel like you have a lot of latitude when it comes to speed control. But Right. Not second-guessing his decision because he executes that so often, but that's the problem. If you even hit the pocket just a little full, the ball goes right in and everybody's happy, but your cue ball path is greatly affected at that distance. I kind of like the soft kick here. Yeah. I think that's the most overlooked kick shot there is, is the soft kick. Now, it didn't work out, but when you have balls near each other, and I think, again, we talked about it yesterday, just sometimes you're trying to shoot a shot just to get back to the table again, you know, whether you're snookered again or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might set this up with a little angle. I don't know. Instead of drawing it. I always feel like this, okay? You're a pro. You have ball in hand. If you don't get three balls from here, because we're giving you the first one, you did something way, way wrong. Or if on your second shot you have to make a bank or something, <laughs> you really butchered this ball in. And it happens to all of us. We saw it yesterday with a few players. Ooh, that was uh, that was close there. Did you see that? Yes. We're playing all ball fouls, so you can't uh, be cavalier moving this around. Okay, I would assume he's drawn by the nine underneath it. But he may just be coming straight back. He is. He Grub the nine. nine. Okay, yeah. so that was not a good shot. Yeah, and he could have set it up kind of on the nine like he originally looked to run the cue ball, which always has good speed control. But, again, if you can stay away from the draw stroke, we saw it yesterday with Zelensky, I think it was, where he had a chance to follow the ball with ball in hand mm -hmm. versus drawing the ball. and. Yeah. You're always just going to be better. If, and, you know, people don't also realize how good you are when you have your peripheral vision in front of you. You know, if you're if you're drawing, you're essentially throwing a ball behind you versus throwing a ball in front of you. And uh, speed control and everything is usually going to be better when you're going forward. Uh, two good rubs there. The wiggle the 10, bumped the 7, got back on line. Yeah, and with the stretch and the bridge, he, he's close to it, so the angle becomes greater quicker, but I still don't know how, how much he can get off the rail here. So the seven's very demanding from near the cushion, especially trying to get position on the eight. When you have to stretch like this, you have to be careful not to double hit the cue ball, too, because if you follow through very much, and it's hard to judge because you can't see your tip, so you're always further away from the cue ball, so sometimes your timing gets distorted when you're using that bridge. Yeah, it's easy to actually swing and miss, meaning be short with it, not mm -hmm. even hit the cue ball. That's my point. And nice recovery shot, though. Really He's good. He's kind of back in line here after a couple of iffy shots. And it's scary when a match for both players starts like this, you know, with a few given shots. You know both these players can get it going. And if the other one doesn't get it going, <laughs> it could get a little one-sided, especially if the break gets one-sided. Right. There's some, you know, semi-routine balls, but if you start to have second guesses and doubts and you miss it, then your confidence shoots down and you can look terrible on a 5x10. It can really snowball on you. Or some of these things you get away with on a 45 by 9 that gets exposed on the 5x10. Um, both player early goings, but the, we're in the 700s in the TPA, and we know they'll be in the 800s by the time we're done. I still, go ahead. I was just going to say 3-2. Yeah, I'm just I'm still amazed about the money ball, how much the players fire the money ball. They really put a lot of pace on it. And, uh, 
I've seen a few missed, you know, I see it out there on the World Nine Ball Tour a lot. And not saying, you know, their shots they're supposed to miss, but I've seen a few get jarred because of it, I feel. And I don't know, I was never one to hit it lightly, don't get me wrong, but I yeah. just wasn't, I'm just not going to just thump it in there every I, I time. I so. think they feel like it takes away some of the skid possibility when they you pace it in there. Yeah. I, I, or, but, well, I'm not saying slow roll it, of course, yeah. but just, you know, you know, his cue ball went, he was pretty flat, and his cue ball went two rails oh, yeah. all the way to the end rail right there right. Uh, with that much speed. So. And if Max, you know, if I was to be critical of form, he does get, quick sometimes on those two short and quick on that final he'll prep a long nice flowing yeah. thing and then the last one gets a little short and quick well i think it's no coincidence uh, you know he came to the house and we worked on some things and uh you know he's another one that occasionally more than occasionally will not pause at the cue ball and any experience i've had with someone that doesn't pause you can almost become a little bit of a wind up with those last two yeah. kind of pre-strokes and yeah. that that's going to get you a little quick All right, these are set up pretty nice. The seven has definitely had some work. The six down table, but for six balls, uh, not half bad. Yeah. All right, you like to come to the table with this type of layout. Where's he going? Got there. Well, and what I see, like Max, for instance, with a player is, you know, the Bigfoot, you're going to play one match, right? So it's really hard to kind of like get that, you know, real gear or, or kind of like that subconscious kind of playing, you know, or, where right. if Max gets that little time where he gets a few consecutive matches, boy, he can be triple tough. Yeah. Yep. Well, he's a crafty veteran that's been around. He's a journeyman pro. You know, he has a high up gear. Went to college at James Madison, is that correct? I believe. I'm not sure. I think so. I remember meeting him when he was 18 with Charlie Williams. The two of them used to run around the country together. Yeah, both from the Newport News area, I believe. But there's that quick again. It's almost like, again, the pre strokes build up into that backswing a little bit. And that, that goes with it again. It was another overcut. Um, and again, when you get a little quick where the balls are clean, they, they're going to definitely cut a little easier if you get quick. The couple misses that we've seen, it, you can definitely see there's tangible doubt in his commitment to the shot. Like he's iffy. He's trying to feel his way. And he's not got, and like you said, there's no rhythm to it. And he's just not comfortable. He's not dialed in on the 5x10, and it's spooky. Well, there is a difference in some of these tournaments. You know, if you play some weekend events, you expect maybe a draw that's going to get you f something favorable, right, to get you a little flow. And yeah. again, you get to play three or four matches yeah. in a day, you know, and you start to really feel things. And and once these great, talented players feel it, they're certainly going to be able to repeat it a little easier. Kick safety by Max. I think it's another reason why you see... You know, names that are talked about, and once they finally get out there in the big scene, they, you know, not always just go out there and, you know, shoot everybody full of holes because you got to get used right. to the, the setting a little bit more and maybe not plan all the time. You're going to play one match a day for a little bit. Choosing to go this way, miscued. Yeah. Choosing to go this way, trying to introduce the eight, let the cue ball come off the five and get over behind the eight, and maybe not sell out rather than kick to the end rail and just blast it into the wide open spaces. Yeah, and he might have made it too. With the rail first, with the curve shot right. as well. So right, and then these guys play all those fragments of percentages. And Alex miscued, and he may have well wiggled his bridge on that delivery. It was certainly a distasteful shot because it was and then everything slippery here. Well, well, you had to pick Alex as a little favorite entering this match. I would say I think that would be fair by most. And. But the more time he gives early here to at Max, it's, uh, that could change easily. Speed control off here a little bit. Not terribly, but a little bit. 
and this is when your speed control is off. Now you start to doubt yourself even more. So there's a psychological, uh, it does take a toll, even if you recover from this. Good recovery. But uh, also another thing we talked about yesterday was stressing, right? You can tell, you know, when a player is stressing a little bit from shot to shot. And, uh, watch out. Sometimes that takes, uh, you know, a little time, more time at the table to kind of, you know, relax a little bit. Of course, the stroke will get better. And the problem is with these great players, they don't give you a whole lot of time. <laughs> you make a couple of mistakes, it's probably adios. Everybody for two in front. Our first two game lead now. Everly, four games to two, heading into track seven. Last year's defending champion will be up later today, Shane Van Boning. Got some great matches coming to you. Next one up will be Conrad Yusheshin versus Naoki Oi from Japan. He also is a fan favorite. He always looks like he slept but didn't comb his hair. He's happy, effervescent, engaging with the crowd, and a great player. That's called style, Mark. Okay. That yeah. hair he's got. I'm, psh, I'm jealous as hell as that guy's here. <laughs> he's cheerful as could be. Yeah, he's uh, truly one of uh, our, our great celebrities and and a uh, huge fan favorite, and don't worry, the guy can play. I mean, uh, he had a couple year run. It seemed like he made it to the semifinals of every big event uh, around the world. Uh, U.S. Opens, a lot of the majors on the World Nine Ball Tour. Three ball, no. Nope. Like it's gonna be a dry break. Alex hasn't come to the table with very many shots here. Doesn't look like he has one here either. And Alex doesn't mind a scrappy match as far as something tactical, tying balls mm -hmm. up, pushing out, of course. But to get himself going, though, knocking some balls in would be nice. He's coming across this one. Watch out for the corner pocket up to take. Oh, he missed the whole ball. And again, remember we talked about the ball squirting a little more, but it really doesn't come back with the spin quite as much on the slick table. So not going to see that miss very often from AP. Yeah, he might have been trying to do something too much there. He probably could have made sure he hit it, but he was probably trying to super thin it and get the cue ball clear down table. He was definitely trying to go down table, and I think he was tr trying to control the speed on the one to where it rocked over to the rail and back behind the eight here, you know, going towards the six, so... And maybe, you know, maybe got down on it a little quick, Mark, you know, for that type of shot. You want to go mm -hmm. look a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're not pocketing the ball, it's, it's hard to make yourself focus to the dimension that you really need to to execute those shots. And we take them for granted, just hit it, it'll be okay. And then the pool doesn't really work well that way. One of Max's best deliveries there, the timing was real nice on the light stun. He's gotten in a perfect position to come three rails. Got to get into the cue ball a little bit to avoid the eight. Not much. Oh, he's going to hit the eight anyways. And that's just getting quick, not allowing that draw to grab and come up the rail, that first rail with the cue ball. I think he did come away with a shot, but he's definitely got to make a, a bit of a tester. It's almost like there's a little bit of a poke or almost a squeeze to a stop at the end of his swing right here because it, you can see the tip comes up short and which doesn't apply the spin and then it responds in that fashion. Well, what I've found from you now many years of teaching is if you start quick at the top, about 90% of the time you're going to end up quitting near the cue ball and uh, that's why people hit at it because you end up quitting a little bit with the stroke and, yeah. and what happens, you get a little more deflection the draw don't work quite as well, everything, because you're kind of, and, right. and this is the number one flaw that I've seen with top players. They don't really get super blasty through the ball. They actually yeah. quit a little bit at the balls when they make a little bit of a mistake. It's almost like they're trying to control impact a little more rather than just getting through. 
Now, Alex lined up, but he wants to play a bank. I thought that maybe a two-rail kick might not be bad because you can get some separation. But I thought he could spin this in. Oh, you fair. think it's enough to No, he's banking it, it okay. but, but uh, I thought he could spin it in. Look at that hit. Look at that shot. Wow. Boy, he went kind of naked at that, too, I meaning that the, he's risking the whole game betting it on that shot. So that's how ugly the distribution of the balls was. There was... You couldn't play a backdoor safety with a shot. Well, I don't think he was trying to go totally naked. He just actually hit it better and got a little more draw out of the ball. I think he was trying to hold him behind the eight, to be fair. But Here his upper body moved as he delivered, and he uh, did not hit the five ball well. The inside spin, or the outside spin pushed the cue ball back into the object ball a little bit. So he clearly did not like that shot. I'm going to tell you. Max getting a lot of time at the table here, even though kicking, he's been at the table pretty much every game. And look at here, as far as kicking, that shaved the eight as it went by and just barely rocked it. It's amazing how thin you can hit a pool ball. I mean, that eight ball with that much speed on the five moved about a half inch over. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like anyways. Well, now what? Tell you kind of, it, there's not much you can do here. You almost have to go bank shot. You hate to lose trying to play a phony safety here. Yeah, I think he's going to have the safety, though. Whether it be a simple one behind the nine, maybe? Trying to leave distance. Oh. It's going to catch the seven. Okay, that's the phony safety. <laughs> yeah. He, he actually hit it kind of like he wanted to and still lost, where if you go to the bank... You can make it one rail, you can make it two rails, and 20% of the time, backdoor safety. But he was confident that he could get the safety, he just didn't. All right, can he draw by the 10 to get for the 8 in the side? Not saying you got to do that, but... It's one of those spots, the eight in the side's decent because it's in a little bit of a funny zone to play in the corner with the side pocket being there. And uh, to get by the 10 ball going forward, you probably have to use very light speed and then hit the full side of the pocket. So probably the draw. Just kind of straight ready. draw, yeah. right? Yeah, but it's got to be effective draw. This is the area that you got to miscue in sometimes if you miss hit it or lunge at it. So it's got to bend quite a bit before it gets to the 10. That's the consternation. Now he's looking, what if I just roll floated over there soft and just take what we have? Or he could use a little piece of the 10 drawn to get for the corner as well, but he could get flat to get on the 9. You know, the 8's a little space away from the side rail, right? Well, he's able to do quite a bit with that. Yeah, you can cut this, I think. Looks like he may bump the nine off the third rail. Should get around it, but depends on how much side he uses. Nice. Nice cut. Soft speed. Okay. Good recovery shot. He's smiling. He's got just a hint the wrong angle, so now he's got to dig in maybe with a little bit of left English and come across the table. I guess he better get into this. This could kind of like just spin and get to the center on the 50. He got into it. Giddy on up. Get out the bridge. <laughs> He's saying, oh, not the bridge again. And this is it. This is where it's hard to see how close your tip is to the cue ball, and this is where your timing gets off on these. Overcut again. Every miss, it seems like yesterday as well. Been a lot of overcuts. Now Max with, uh, you know, he's had a couple gifts already, right? I mean, to get a couple on his side. Now this is going to be 5-2. This is halfway to 10. So Alex Pagline may be looking for a timeout soon, Mark. You know, yeah, most guys do. He stays pretty positive. 
He doesn't take, unlike the others, he does not take very many tactical timeouts, but he's at the table now, like, considering it, it looks like. <laughs> the lion. Yeah, he's used the bridge five times and three misses. Yeah, he's, I think he's had to use the bridge a little bit more than that, but nevertheless, he, he's got at least three critical misses in there. After we bragged on him being a snooker player with a one four seven, being good with the bridge. But. I don't think I've ever seen him miss three times with the bridge. Me either. No, I'm talking about like entirely, as long as I've known him. Oh, not, totally. not one match. Yeah, I see. I'm talking about <laughs> okay. totally. I mean, yeah. No. I mean, he doesn't use it very often, believe it or not. Even as small as he is, plays behind his back some. and He's such a good position player, of course. Now the 10-footer is going to bring out the, the bridge. <laughs> it's just going to happen. Well, something drained in. He's going to get a shot. Ball. He's yeah. going to get a shot. He's hoping for a shot. <laughs> he got a shot. Two and the three, kind of funny. Looked pretty playable for a combination, though, I think. And, you know, not too scary on that end because it's just the 7 10, the center of the table with the nines. Mm -hmm. The nine's kind of funny in the way, though. So. Well, even the four and the eight here, when you, at least the eight is going to be a problem here. Yeah, absolutely. So. Not taking much time. So Inside must, spin, then. Does he go between the eight and nine here, trying to get on the two in that corner? I guess so. Oh, he's overcut it. Oh, he was up out of his stance. Uh, he had the uh, Kent Kaiser pose there at the end with that tip slashed off to the side. It's great for a magazine picture, but it's not that great on accuracy. He's got some doubts going through his mind here. Yeah, and, you know, no matter the name, if you start to see him, you know, struggling, you know, not saying it totally changes what you do, but here you got to look at trying to make things tough on, on Alex, as much tough as you can. Yeah. Hard to do from this range. Well, well even rail, rail rail on the side rail is not the worst. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just, yeah. just make him get you back to the table. Maybe you can defend a little better next time. This will really do. A really good effort. Uh, if you said it's going to turn out like this from end rail to end rail, you'd be delighted to have that type of result. Could you go two or one rail? Chose that speed for the possibility of a backdoor safety, and that was well designed. It's not a certainty. It's just what the probabilities are. Yeah, Max, this is one of the more difficult shots to me, for me, is trying to overcut this ball past the four and really get enough speed on it to get it safe. Uh, it's one of my worst shots, to be fair, when it's this thin. Well, you know? sometimes you play the four or one into the four and just, but I don't that's know. That's what I would prefer. I don't know if he can do that. It looked too thin from the monitor a second ago, but this looks better. Yeah, you see, I f always feel like I do this, where I never get enough speed on the one to cross it over. Yeah, you don't get much when you hit it that thin. Yeah, and I think that's all he had, you know, so. All right, difficult out. He's got to get on the two. It's a little covered up by the nine. He's got to get on the three properly with the ten there to get back for the four. So not only a few struggles, some tough layouts for these guys. That's a nice stroke getting past the nine. Stayed nice and heavy here. Still, though, the seven's there. He's got to think about a few things. Now, we've watched Alex over the years many, many times. And from here, it's a 50-50 match. He's got some fight. He comes up with some shots. He somehow finds a, a tempo or a timing. And he can close out a match. So it looks like he's three games behind, but it's not that far behind at all for Alex Pegulion. I didn't even yep. shoot at it. That's a decision. Time. Didn't want to take it. He's, he's trying to minimize unforced errors. He's just giving Max too many turns. He's going to start making Max earn these turns. Yeah, and that just tells you how awkward the three to the four. It wasn't about the two ball that made him play safe there. It was the three to the four, really, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, I don't like to just blast here and lose lose accuracy, especially if I see my opponent struggling a little bit. I want to make sure I get the hit here. Just one rail. Now, I don't know the speed, but that looks a little long to me on the way the table's playing. Yeah, you'd playing. have to hit this pretty hard. Oh, he hit yeah. it nicely. Yeah, really, right. really good speed. 
And that doesn't look like much, but again, we just saw what Alex passed on, so this is not easy. I'll tell you, he could, if he could stop his ball there, he could play the three, have a good chance to make the ten and with a little high ball and probably get shape on the four as well. He's going to play the two on the side. No, he is going corner, excuse me. Real smooth on the delivery. But he just didn't connect, and that's how hard that shot was. So. Was he going down to play a kiss shot on the 10? Because he overcut it a little bit. Cue ball ran a little exactly. more. But, yeah. Exactly, yeah. He was trying to roll that in there with a little bit of pace. He didn't want to just baby it down there, so he used a little bit of pace. But then when he slightly uh, didn't cut it enough, the cue ball retained a lot more speed and came another diamond and a half forward. Doesn't look like Max can make the two and go straight into the three, so we have to come off the end rail, and he might introduce a little side spin, try to get into the ten rather than the three. Three doesn't go in the four corner pocket. Right into the ten, good shot. Yeah, it's perfect. This is ball in hand here just to pull it up the rail, and I tell you, he's still got some, he's still got some work now. I mean, the four or five, he's got to get to the seven. He's got to move the ball up and down the table, but. It's a nice shot there on the two, and you can tell he's still a little amped up, though. And that's the funny thing about pool. It's so mental. You know, you can be on the, hate to say, dog in that side of things, but then you're in, a, in the lead, feeling feeling good, but that, that kind of adrenaline's a little different as well. So you got to be able to maintain. A little awkward here, Mark. And these are the type of layouts you have to cash in if you're going to beat Peggy Lyon. A lot of times you don't get this type of opportunities. Watch, if he gets quick, he'll end up on the rail over there. If he smooths it, he'll get plenty of movement. You see how it's kind of died, though? Yep, yep, when yeah. it arced. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of wasted energy with that arc on the cue ball, and so you're not going to get near as much movement. And that basically, again, is from, from getting a little quick on that transition. So now he's got to pick out a path. He's coming two rails a little towards the nine. I think I go ahead and go with it rather than trying to check the cue ball. Just straight topspin. I wouldn't try to introduce English. Just make sure you get this ball down. Yeah, I like what he shows there as far as going with the route of the cue ball. He overcut the seven a little, so it ran a little more. Did catch the side rail. So he's making a scrappy out here to try and get a, what looks like a really big lead. What do you like here, Mark? The nine doesn't pass the ten. So I think you got to go top you know, English, right? Yeah, and then more than three rails. You have to go three and a half or four rails to play that back into the side, the opposite side of the table that he's standing on now. I think he lays up somewhat where he's at now, a little closer oh. and plays the nine in that other corner. Oh, he got quick. Yeah, yeah just had a lot going on there. Yeah, first time when he got a little quick there, he actually had a little body movement. Uh, oh, definitely. Seen, yeah, uh, definitely. If they replayed that one, we'd see some body movement. Now, this is this is pretty straight in, too. <laughs> Awkwardly straight. Yeah. He's got to smooth it. Just make sure you creep across the nine. Don't let it arc on you. Oh, he decided... Put oh, the, he he decided to nice go ahead and make play the arc is what he was. What running. a nice shot that was. Well done. All right, Alex Pagalon trying to get back on the board and we'll get back on the board here. Okay, good decision there, going three cushions on that near flat straight in ball rather than trying to just get two. If you missed any of the matches yesterday, boy, we had good execution, a little grit. Started things off with John Mora or Jesus Atencio. Then it was Joshua Filler or Miesko Fortunski. So it's Filler and John Mora tomorrow at 1 o'clock to find out who moves on to the final four. Later on yesterday afternoon, it was Federer Gorst over Jason Shaw. 
and Victor Zelinski over Corey Dubel. So Gorst and Zelinski tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 to find out. Good to see Dave Matlock pool. here. He's been actually out playing a lot more pool the last year, year and a half. Yeah, I saw his wife Peggy. She's here. She's sweet. Do you know her? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know her, know her, but uh, I've met her, yeah. She, for many years, she retired. She was a newscaster on TV there. Just beautiful. And I always thought, boy, Dave married up here. <laughs> they're pretty darn good. But they're perfect together. She's a good pool player, too. Well, he's a great guy. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. Dave. Down to One earth. of my all-time favorites, I'll tell you. Okay, Max wants to generate some offense here. I'm going to turn the table over open. Took a little speed off there. The four is going to end up short. He's had this snooker on the one a few times with the bare ball there, the six, with the one being near the corner. So Alex has got to make a decision. Hard to push out, obviously. Now, does he go the long rail here, trying to come across it? Hmm. Can't really cue down with the two ball there, not... Not easily, anyways. I think you have to kick off the long rail. Yeah, you need to go soft then. Yeah. If you're going to go long rail. I think he's going to try and just pace it somewhat thickly and just bleed the cue ball by the eight. Could go for the make, but, I mean, no position with the make, really, is there? Oh, the, wow, what a shot. And that's what pool players are all about in playing great pool is you got to – it's kind of like a win or lose shot right there and wasn't anything easy about it. Yeah. One thing, if he hits it a little heavier, though, the one ball does come down table, and the cue ball loses quite a bit of speed, too. So it's not quite as bad as it might have seemed. Good shot there. Smartly did not try to manipulate the cue ball much, but just used speed. Yeah, that was a huge miss in the last rack on that eight ball from... For Max, it's going to be 6-2 maybe, and you kind of feel like a real alarm clock went off for Alex here. You are, to me, for some reason, it, just, it instantly looks better at the table as far as just engaged. I know he's made some mistakes, but... It was a very ugly start for Peggy Lyon in this match, but I've seen this happen time and time again, and uh, he just finds another gear here and digs in. Mental, mental toughness, I guess, is really what it comes down to. There's no excuses, and he just owns it. He's kind of accountable to himself now. He just says, I'm just going to concentrate, pretend the match is starting over from scratch, and play my game. You can see here he's going around checking the position, and, and the bridge has cost him dear, dearly in this match. Guess that he can get two rails here and follow by the nine. Right. You know what I mean? Like get a little angle and he can still go by the nine to the top rail because this angle here is hard to get straight. It's hard to get straight where you can draw back. You can do it. It's not easy. Well, he's going to draw across, so I thought maybe he would go forward. So he's trying to get that, mm. that heavy enough angle to bounce by the nine, but still mm. be able to go I one rail. Know. Pretty full. Now nah, with the speed, he should get by the nine, I think. Going to have to power up. Now here's where you can't get quick. Okay, good. Nice tempo. He's in a good spot now. Should just come one rail down the table. Could use two, but I kind of prefer the one here.
Well, I said about Engage, I'll tell you, the stroke looks better also. Just the overall delivery. Yeah, smooth. 5-4 is that score. You know, uh, in an interesting way, uh, these guys never get to play on 5 by 10 and the first part of the match is ugly and uh, messy, but you don't see any quit in either one of these two guys. No. Veteran players that know that sometimes you don't always get to win pretty. Yeah, both of them, you know, they don't win in the rotation side of things as much as they used to, but they're out here still competing because that's what they do. I mean, they never give up. And they're still very, very competitive and can certainly win events still because of that. Of course, all the talent. Good body language by both players, too, despite that. Uh, you haven't seen them slumping the shoulders and shaking their head and putting the palms up like, yeah, it's not going my way today. Or was it Max Eberle that got the spot, right? Because of Omar Al Shaheen, I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Max, he wouldn't say he's not going to look at it like free rolling, but certainly appreciating getting to play again in this Bigfoot. Now, that's more of the kind of a slap break that uh, we saw. Was it Fortunsky kind of had that kind of tempo on it? Didn't work out for him so much, but a good shot here to get started for Alex. Not easy to get on the two. Mm -mm. Any recommendations, well, Mark? <laughs> I'm almost thinking real first, you know, on the one to get enough speed to get all the way around. I don't, What's you there? hate to. You hate to jack up on this because it can get away from me. If you hit it just a, you know, a little bit, a millimeter thick or thin, it'll still go in the pocket, but your cue ball changes trajectory by so much. I think high ball, three rails. If you can hit it clean, it's there to come three rails between the 5-8. I'm afraid it arcs so much, so we'll yeah, see. Yeah, that's why you got to hit it clean, not force it like okay, that. Okay, yeah. yeah, perfect hit. And see how it retained the speed, just what Jeremy said. Good yeah. shot. Yeah, I was you, thinking rail first for the same reason that you would retain a lot more speed on it, but it's certainly it, it's dangerous either way. Well, that, that's one of those uh, game time decisions when you're down at the table. But great shot. And it seems like Alex is getting a little cleaner with the stroke to me. So the last rack definitely looked better. Uh, go ahead and cut this in, AP. You got to cut this in. Pocket's pretty big going down that side rail, and you're close to it. You can go back and forth with the four there. Center of the table is fairly open. I think he's supposed to shoot here. Yeah, just trust what you look at, you know. You're not going to be aimed poorly from that distance. Yeah, he's got to shoot at that, right, Mark? Pretty shot. Oh, oh, I thought he made it. I thought he did, too. Maybe these... Pockets are snugging up just a smidgen here because he did not hit that bad that, all the way. The three diamonds away after he hit it, I still thought it was in, and then all of a sudden. I'll tell you another thing you just uh, alluded to is breaking in is the rail. You saw the two didn't slide quite as much. It kind of bounced a little more, so that means the claws start to break in a bit more. We get down towards the end. This table's going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah, four and a quarter inches yeah, pockets a, yeah. come into play. It's a beast now, but it's going to be a capital B here in just a few a few days, I think. Fancy his chances here. Like his chances of making it. Oh, wow. Went right around it. And there's, again, I, you know, talk about it just to learn. I always say, and I was always told, a rail tells no lies when it comes to the stroke. You know, you can make a little bit of a so-so stroke and get the ball down, but when it comes to kicking and banking, mm -hmm. you put a so-so stroke on it, it's yeah. going to show you every time. So The the backspin didn't have a chance to arc there, mm -hmm. and, and so it just was a flat ball coming around there because I think he was planning on curving it in there a little bit. A little draw, yeah. But you know as well as I do, you know, we've all banked a ball, and it went kind of backwards on us, you know, like we cut yeah. it and it straightened out so much. And, you know, that's all from poor strokes, you know, sending kind of a flat cue ball or maybe the timing's bad. You can get away with that shooting them in sometimes, but very rare with a kick or a bank. Yeah, this was odd. He should have probably played the four in the corner rather than the side coming across because that was a lot of travel with the cue ball. It could have been more conservative. If he gets straight on the four with ball and handle the two, then it's just stop. Now he's got some work to do. 
Yeah, he was looking for a little bump, and yeah. I couldn't agree with you more, Mark. Again, we talked about it yesterday. Why pass position, right? Just yeah. to get a little bit of what you think is an easier shot. Now that little rub on the rail, last shot down the rail, comes into mind like, oh, maybe I better pace this a little more. Well, he's supposed to cut it. I'm looking right at it. I, I, I mean, with an open position above the eight here, back and forth, he's definitely supposed to shoot it. This exact same shot he just missed. Get a little bit thinner and scored it. And a little smoother too, huh? But now, and that's the speed that made the ball go in the easiest and the most accurate because it was conservative, but then you don't get the good position on the six when you play it at that speed. Yeah, and I think we, what we can say is that, you know, both players just hasn't gotten it all together yet. You know, bits and pieces are coming, but. Super thin, soft, no power, over speed. Oh, boy. Yeah. Earth. That's not what he wanted. Which I don't know if you're ever a golfer or not, Mark, but. We always talk about in golf, you know, just bringing it all together. One day you have the driver, you ain't got no putter, you know, next yeah, day you, yeah. you can't find your golf ball off the tee, you're hitting the irons perfect, but you're hitting five off, you know, right. from the woods, you know, right. so that happens in pro pool as well. Nice shot there. It's going to have a little stretch maybe, or is it going to keep going? It should be okay. Now, here when you're close, you don't have to use the second rail. No, that's right. He can just scoot a little bit of side spin. Yeah, and dig on the cue ball a little more, a little pinch. Now, I would I'd take my time here. I'd go over there and look just to kind of calm yourself down a little bit. Yeah, that's a great point. You don't want to just get in a hurry. Definitely need to cash this one in. Nice stroke. Yeah. And Most calmer, huh? Watching to see if he got quick on that one. That's the one that'll make you a little jumpy. Just going to back the cue ball up uh, eight inches. If you go a little bit further, you can play it in the side. If you stop at eight inches, you can play it in the corner. And you can't cheat it, huh? To get over for I simply like that. Oh, maybe yeah. you could. Okay. Well, that's good too then. And he's going to stretch it back out a little bit, back to two games. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a huge game there. Just a little high ball, a little medium roll stroke. Looks like he's stunning, maybe. But... Okay. Well, that takes some of the Pagulian momentum away. Negates some of that, puts him a game closer to the finish line. Both players, uh, Max is at 716, Pagulian 683, I think. That's what that says. So definitely substandard for their general caliber of play at this juncture of the match. Another interesting part of this is when you start off with brand new cloth, brand new balls, these brand new balls, no matter how you polish used balls, will never travel as far as brand new ones because the luster is not scuffed up from the chalk and then the pitting that happens when they hit the carpet or something like that. When you get any of those scuffs on there, so even if I say, hey, this table's super fast, it still goes 10% faster than what you think. Mm -hmm. Due to that, you're not familiar with playing ideal, ideal. So you always have to factor that in. They also do slide in a little bit initially, early. But now that the claw's starting to break in, we're starting to see that. Oh, no. Not the Dunkaroo. Yeah. That's what you don't want to do. Yeah, definitely. It would be better to break dry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it would be yeah. way better. Absolutely. The last thing break you want to do. Break dry and leave them straight in. <laughs> That's let, fine, too, let, but not ball in hand. Right. You don't want to let your opponent get that momentum right back. Yeah, it's something about ball in hand, too. It can really just kind of makes you happy, <laughs> first yeah, off. You yeah, know, it kind of makes yeah. you forget about the, the, the few little mistakes that have happened. Of course, ball in hand with any of these players in the Bigfoot usually is just uh, doom. So now the only hope he has is transition to the seven ball. I mean, maybe if he doesn't get perfect on the seven, otherwise it looks like, you know, the five, six, everything else is good. And I'm not saying that's hard. I'm saying that's the only place left to, could be an issue. Yeah. Now 
Mark's talking to the cue ball quickly there. <laughs> and I'm wondering what was the real worry. I know he didn't want to overrun, but he could handle a lot. And the five's hanging. I mean, the four has a lot, two pockets. So. Now he's going to have to get a little bit of an angle on that six. And not saying it's tough, but can be awkward sometimes when the ball's kind of in near the pocket, especially, you know, the nines there could be a little concern. Shouldn't be a problem, but. Well, there's nothing easy. You and I don't mess from up here down there on the table. It's quite another deal. Yeah. I'm going to play a set on here. I don't know about 10 ball, though. Can't break well enough 10 ball. <laughs> All right, the bridge. It's used it quite a few times here. Did Alex change cues on us? Yeah, he did. He changed playing cues on us. Sometimes that kind of freshens things up. So I've seen Efren do that in the middle of a match. Oh, I've seen Alex do it a ton. But that's what I'm saying. There ain't a whole lot here. Now, he did move the 10, and that was by design. And that really helped out getting on the 7, too. Yeah. Well, this is where the, just the flat stun and let it creep past the head string a little yeah. bit. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, don't like, do go for a home run here. Yeah. Just get it out where you got your bridge hand on the table. Yeah, I like that. Oh, not on the rail. Won't be so, it won't be so encumbering. Because of, he can just roll this in. But if other times you want to really avoid the rail. Here he has the right angle. He's just long. And just just get the seven ball down. The cue ball is going to be perfect no matter what. Yeah, and I know you want to hold the natural angle, but don't sacrifice the ball. You can handle a lot on the eight. Yeah. You know? I like the pace he put on that real confident pace. Now... Got everything worked around the way it should be. Now you cannot let down on this ball you know you can make. You still have to play position here. Mm, mm, mm. From nowhere, this got really tricky. Really tricky, Mark, from nowhere. And now we're going to see a real first shot. And these are missable because of the pace you're going to have to apply. Yeah, and you really got to look on the 10-footer. There's not really as much short side as you think. That 9 was just barely on the other side of the table. He could have just laid up on that 8, taken the 9 in this corner he's playing anyways instead of tracking the cue ball. It became very missable. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to play rail first and creep the cue ball with English. Yep. So a huge 9 and 10 to really put the heat here on Alex. Now here, I like to look at how far I can go, and I can go a long ways, all the way up to the third diamond-ish, uh, and have a nice, comfortable cut on the 10, so I don't feel like I'm babying it so much, you know, and, and maybe something goofy happens on the 9. Max has got a pretty long bridge. I don't know. I He's definitely he not going roll. up and down. <laughs> well, no, because it's not even the right angle. You'd have to hit that warp drive. Yeah, and like I, I said, you can go all the way up to the third diamond near the side, you know, ish. You don't want to be on the rail, of course, but and handle a lot on the 10. So not really that difficult if you look at it that way. I kind of feel like they're making more. I think this is rolled in. Yeah, that's I what I mean. Big yeah. deal. Well, this shot. He's going all the way. I can't believe this. Oh, no, he's not. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought this was very achievable. He even overcut it slightly and held it good. Yeah, and he may have just been settling the nerves more yeah. than anything, I guess. Yeah, that was finally one shot I wouldn't have had too much anxiety over. <laughs> yeah, especially when your opponent misses, right? You know, like uh, I would have felt great about that one. <laughs> You'd be sharking me up here, thinking, well, I'm not seeing this right. You just rolled in. Finally one I could get. 7-4 is our score. Our next matchup here. Everybody is 714. That happens to coincide with what Jason Shaw's all-time high run in the straight pool was, 714, until they took some away. But oh, they took some away? Oh, yeah. They uh, found a foul, object ball foul. So he's a 669 and took 45 balls away from it.
Oh, wow. But more importantly, that is Babe Ruth's all time home run total, 714. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Which also that. happens to coincide with Nolan Ryan's all time strikeout. Uh, he's the all time leader, 5,714. Yeah. Well, he's got records that'll never be broke. That guy. Tell you that. <laughs> nope. Nope. You can get 300 strikeouts a year for 20 years, or you can get 200 for 30 years. You want to beat Nolan Ryan. Yeah, on the if and, your arm doesn't fall and, off, and the no hitters and everything else. But the funny, his last no hitter, I believe it was the same day as Ricky Henderson when he he became the total bases king, or maybe it was stolen bases king, and 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 Ricky did it during a day game. I think it was 1991, I believe. So of course Ricky, being Ricky, oh, yeah. thought he was going to get all the glory throughout, and then and then that <laughs> evening, Nolan yeah. threw a seventh no hitter, and nobody heard anything more about Ricky Henderson's stolen base record. So I am the greatest. He yeah. held the base or is it? Yeah, <laughs> only Ricky. Yeah, he which was. he was, in my opinion, from what I've seen, a top twenty-five player that I've ever seen, uh, all-around player, uh, Ricky Henderson. Oh, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Most leadoff home runs ever. Total bases, maybe he's up there. Stolen bases, all yeah, time leader. All time leader, never be broken, probably. So not the way that Ricky they, being they don't Ricky run though, much. Yeah. he's so much into himself, and they were quoting John three sixteen to him, and when he heard that, he said, "Ricky don't care about John three sixteen. Ricky hitting three twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> he has no idea about any Bible verses. Yeah." What a player, though, I'll tell you that. We are lucky in our era there. I mean, you're a little ahead of me, but not much. You got to see a bit more of the ones I would love to have seen, but, you know. Yeah, I was lucky that way. Get to see. What do we got here? He needs a flick off the eight to help him. He got oh, it. Oh, it did not help, though. But it might have saved him the from scratch going or to the drink. Yeah. yeah, so it's ugly still, but it yeah. could have been worse. Got to show us some really good. It'd be pay a lot to, to hit this with the four and ten kind of, you know, jammed up over here near near the five ball. So any hit on the three would really go a long ways besides losing the cue ball. Going to have to use a little draw because if you use topspin here, it wants to warp long. Let's see if he learned from the last. You got to give it time to take. And can't get quick. Got to smooth through it. Oh, oh he yeah, scored it. ball. It's going to be okay. Okay. Yeah, of course, neither one of us were, were around for Jim Thorpe or something back at the turn of the century, that, you know, four or five sport athlete. <laughs> yeah. But we did get to see Dion and Bo Jackson oh, and some yeah. just incredible athletes there. So Going I, first to third, Dion. i never seen anyone else. What about the throw from left field to first base from Bo Jackson? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. So I love this, playing for the bank. Let's stay aggressive. He can really put, put the heat on here if he goes in and gets out. I don't Be think he's going to, to the bank, is he? Really? you oh. got to go for this cross side. I thought he was going to park the cue ball here. I thought he was going to make well, sure he, he got might. safe. Well, he might. But, I mean, uh, like you said, <coughs> it's not always just safe, right? Especially a guy behind you that kicks so well. So right. This sets up to where he's about uh, 80% on this bank, I think. He's definitely winding up on the bank. Just a light stun draw. He played your shot. Uh, I'm I glad approve. it didn't go in because the five would have been really awkward. All age to the please. All yeah, it looked like it was going to go long, so he just went ahead and parked the cue ball there and make Alex play. Does not want to give back a cheap win. Yeah, and, you know, that's the beauty of the game. It's it's hard to argue either way, really, as far as it being incorrect. It's just what you feel at the moment. Oh. You know, if he had a hit... Anything but thin, I don't think he gets a rail. If he hits like a yeah. third of that ball, I don't think he would have got to the right. rail. So everything a little out of sorts at the moment for Alex, or many things rather, not maybe everything. Now here you're going to have to play the 8-9. So I probably like. I like shooting the four on the other side, rolling forward to where I can come one rail by the 10 mm -hmm. off the side cushion rather than coming two long rails here. But, you know, like again, it's a little preference. We'd like to get close to the six so you can for sure get a good angle on that eight or close to the eight when you play it. 
Yeah, he's going to get a little bit of a cut unless he's wrapping the corner here, which I don't recommend. Okay, he's got. This is why again the ball in hand now shot. He's thin. Yeah, the ball in hand he's shot means thin. so much, right? Huh. Yeah. Well, always talk about it. You know, when you're in good position, okay, that's when you stay aggressive with position. That's mm. when you take advantage and go ahead and get really, you know, stay good position yeah. as much as you can. And there's nothing more than ball in hand that gives here's, you that, right? His ball in hand, he made one more shot, now already using the bridge. So yeah. something went wrong. You know, yeah. uh, not that he can't you know, continue. Oh, he's overcut yeah. it. He's got a dude. bit of a roll. but So ball in hand, he did not even get three balls, which is always like a taboo for a pro player. You know, maybe you don't get four balls, but you got to get three. I gave you the first one. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is tough. This is not fun. Struggling, coming to the table, looking like this. Trailing three games late in the match, and now you got to maybe go a ball that's a you know, quarter inch off the rail. You got to go rail first, try to spin it in, or you got to try to play safe from an awkward spot. Yeah, what's the shot here? He might be two railing it to the other end rail and try to arc the cue ball over behind the eight. Yeah, like this. Yeah, he's going to get a little much speed unless he's got a little control. Uh, but he he's did pretty good. He's going to make him come with a shot. Right. That's, that's and the most uh, awkward important. combo afterwards. You know, you're not going to be able to do both. So he's going to have to roll it in and just make the awkward combo. I think you're supposed to or, duck here. Yeah, or duck. And I don't blame him on that if he does so. You know, playing one pocket a lot, I'm, I'm, I feel like good about these shots but like about a quarter ball third ball hit on the six lay it on the side rail float the cue ball two cushions up behind the tent you know what i mean just kind of roll the six past the side onto the this side this is rail. the other way this yeah. is the other way uh, snooker the only thing is with the eight nine there you really need the cue ball on the rail to try and limit these right. return safeties damn good job yeah that was good this will work yeah it's doable for alex but he's got to hit it lightly he leaves if he's short at all he knows he's going to get really locked up behind the eight and nine so this is the exact situation that great players extract themselves and get another good turn they don't lose with this shot but it's uh you don't practice it so you're not good at it but if you're going to play pro pool you have to be good at getting yourself a turn did he miss you on that no just caught a little light and that happens so often from distance like that and that's why max of course didn't get himself in position to run out but and made a mistake on the six, but uh, pretty smart safety there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we call a soft safety, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to get the snooker, but you're trying to make things tough. And he's a little, he's got a little angle here. You just got to kind of stun a little bit, get above. Oh, he's digging downward. He might be drawn back for safe and just go down table. Two way? Uh, no, I, I'm saying just a safe. Just get. If he feels like he's, because he didn't want to give up a cheap one. No, he was able to play that. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. <laughs> Got it perfect. Well, you know, that's why I think eyes on you and, and people to talk to means so much. Because if you saw right there, real smooth, real easy transition, yeah. just hit it perfect, you know? Yeah. It's when the players start to need power is when things start to get a little quick. And, and they don't need a whole lot of power when the nerve's going. His speed control was really good there. Yeah, just a beautiful stroke. But there again, he got a little off with it because he did get quick again. Now the cue ball in a treacherous position down table or a lot more treacherous than it should have been. Now this is the one, if you try to put a little more on it, really easy to miss. I think you got to take your medicine here and just smooth this coming two rails a little past the center of the table. And the 10 ball is not easy. Yeah. It's making you want to whack it, right? To ice the ball, but that's when you miss it actually. And the 10 ball, he's bridged over it, so he has to be careful. Good shot there. Yeah. And Good again, shot. really smooth. Yeah. Much much smoother than most uh, or some of the mistakes we've seen. All right, Everly looking much sharper here now, eight to four in front. Boy, was Alex was right on the verge of making this five five. He, he won two in a row and was right on the verge, and then something slipped away, and now it's been all uh, 
Max Eberle. Yeah, going back to my early baseball days, I got to see Henry Aaron. I got to see you know, Tom Seaver and Don Dysdale. And well, Lou Brock a lot. I mean, was, you know, I was pretty lucky. Just the Astros were a real competitive team there in the '80s and had a lot of a lot of great players. You know, so that was after Jimmy Wynn, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, but uh, got to you know we had our little league day, and of course we get up there early and. Got to, got to go to a lot of games and whatnot. I actually became really good friends with J.R. Richards. I don't know if you remember J.R. Yeah, Richards. Yeah, of course. Uh, he was a fireballer. Oh, yeah. About he was six, a eight. drug problem, right? Yeah, yeah, but then he ended up, you know, becoming just a great human, you know, overall. And he, I think Moises, uh, uh, Moises, um, Moses Malone uh, played a lot of, not a lot of pool with him, but a little bit back in the day. He used to come in the pool room late at night. Hmm. Never really gambled, but just come in there and played on the other side uh, of the room, and, and, and he liked to play pool. Come in the 24-hour place when it was it was real quiet at, late at night. And what was the name play. of that place? Well, it was Slick Willie's on uh, Hillcroft on West Arm. It was a big gambling place, but uh, one side of the pool room was all recreation players, pretty much. And it's amazing how many people didn't recognize him. When he came in, of course, after he retired, he had lost a little bit of weight, got a little thinner, you know, like a lot of those athletes do. And uh, But I recognized him immediately. My dad was a huge Moses Malone fan. So that Slick Willies was out off of Westheimer on the west side from yeah. Galleria? Yeah, but okay. not too far. It wasn't extremely oh. down there. There was you know, one way out crop. there. Oh, okay. there were a few. Yeah. Westheimer yeah. at one time had eight pool rooms <laughs> on, on one street. Uh, there, just like 1960 does. It's uh huh. That you know now those two streets. You West remember Timer. the place called the House of Pies? Of course, there's. Oh, they, yeah. I don't know if they're still there or not, but they used to be. That was our late night pool spot. Oh yeah, no, that place was good, and it was a. It wasn't a chain. It was a really just to Houston area, I believe. Well, Mad Max with a break and run out gone ongoing yeah. here. Little short of ideal, and what happens with the slick table here? It's real easy to get a little on top of this ball. Like if you try to check it with English, left English, it it kind of doesn't straighten out as much. So you gotta have nice speed here as you come two rails above the nine. When he hit the pocket fat, that took the pace out of the cue ball. Otherwise, it would have been pretty nice. He's looking at back cutting into the side. Okay. Better get that nice tempo on this transition from backswing to forcing. Uh, yeah, and you couldn't argue if he didn't go for the cut, went for the bank, really. It's that tough, the cut. Is he going to be able to hold the speed easily, Mark? Pretty Good smooth. Shot. Pretty smooth. Good recovery shot there. Huge game. This will be our first break and run out of the set if he completes it. And much better here in the latter stages of the match for Max Everly. It's Max Leads 9 4. Got three more matches yet. Earl Campbell used to own a sporting goods store down by the Galleria. We used to go in there and I'd talk to him during the strike and he'd give us Rockets tickets. Yeah, he was just a cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's all the number 34s were my heroes. <laughs> Sweetness. Walter Baton. Well, the Houston ones for sure, but I loved Wal uh, Walter now. He, yeah. he was the one 34 that wasn't from Houston that, uh, that I did love. All right, Alex, you talked about all kinds of ways we've seen him win. He's wanting to get something started and make something special out of this first match. Okay, the one. Yeah, the two's yeah, going to get Alex's in the way. Not going to get anything. UV 
viewers, our schedule is the same as yesterday. 1, 3, 30, 7, and 9, 30. That'll complete the first round of this Bigfoot. Tomorrow we'll move on to, into the final eight. Big match at seven. Van Boning and Lee Van Cortesa. Lee Van always gets top four in these. Remarkably played the combination. Did not work. No worse for wear, though, mercifully. Now, of course, don't play to lose. You're on the hill. But uh, so just no, no ball in hands. Don't give up any ball in hands. Make him earn everything. You're going to get to break the balls a few times to try and win this match. Try to go two cushions here. Play the yeah, two. And I like maybe, coming under it. That's and, what I'm and, saying. Yeah. Two cushions, billiard the seven. Oh, he yeah. missed it all. Okay. Yeah, but it's amazing he doesn't play a running ball there. You know, it's more of like a, a stunny ball that he's shooting that ball with. And then, and to me, it's just a little harder to repeat what I'm doing with that. So, yeah, exactly. Miss hit the cue ball just a little bit at that speed. And, you know, things just... Uh, and again, it probably didn't agree with the shot you and I were talking about. So in the defense of Max, he was probably playing something a little different. But what Mark and I were talking about is kick two rails underneath, try and slide the cue ball at the seven. But at least you got the two going upward, and maybe you get a little separation if you don't get, you know, the seven down. But to miss the, uh, the kick itself right there, that's a pretty big error from these guys. And again, just what I was talking about before the shot, you know, you got yourself in position 9-4, right? So little simple things. No ball in hands. Make sure you hit it. Don't, mm -hmm. get, don't get too crazy with what you're trying to do with these kicks. Feel pretty good, Mark. I don't know about yourself, but... Fantastic. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. it's been off the entire match. For one reason or another, it's been off. Couldn't have been worse. And once again, the bridge. Hill. Yeah. Once again, that cost him. Well, again, we talked about it earlier. Anytime you have to get it in the cue ball, that's when it really will start to expose when you're when you're off a little bit, you know. <laughs> Nothing to it. That was a pretty nice recovery. Now, if you miss this, you have to miss it thin. You cannot miss it fat or you risk losing the whole match. I'm surprised he's not pulling this out of the corner two rails. He's going to level out and come around the nine, maybe? Or, I don't know. Oh, he's hit this thick. Okay. So, Alex, uh, probably not going to make it through this 10 foot match. Uh, well, he, I mean, he didn't even threaten the pocket there. That yeah. was not even a quality effort, let alone the fact he should have been overcutting it to begin with. But it's almost like he was, to me, knowing Alex, he was thinking about what's going on, like, what's going on here? What, why mm -hmm. am I struggling versus that attention? And, and that can happen to any of us. Right. Things get worse when you're losing. You don't, you don't think as clearly. Opposite handed here. Yeah, the bridge, you know, he's had a few struggles with that bridge, right? The inside spin, nice yeah, shot. That was a pretty yeah. nice stroke right there. All right. <laughs> All right. Probably use a little inside here to eat the cue ball speed up a little bit, make sure nothing crazy goes wrong. Caught it thick, so he's going to rest near the rail. Oh yeah, when the when the balls are fluttering into the pocket, it doesn't do your uh, heart rate any better. <laughs> you know, if you have high blood pressure, <laughs> not hitting the pocket cleanly here under pressure is not the answer. is definitely a little bit more flinchy than usual. Oh, 
Like right there, I probably would have just chipped it in and played the other corner myself, but I'm not saying it's right or wrong, just, a, you know, a little different strokes for different folks. Well, when you move it, now you have a chance to get further off angle. When you take your shot, you know what you're getting. Yeah, no and, question. and the stretch a little bit as well on the 10-footer, yeah. so. 9-5 is our score. year of this event, I think it was 2013, if I remember. Dennis Orcolo won. Then the next two years, Shane Van Boning won. 14-15. Then Jason Shaw, 16-17. Then Roberto Gomez. J.L. Chang won at 19. Shaw again in 20. Filler in 22. And last year, Shane Van Boning. Van Boning and Shaw both have Three Bigfoot championships at the Derby City Classic. And I think, I think it was a break and run in his last match to get on the hill. Yep. So, yeah, was first one of the match. It's always classy to close out your set with a break and run out. Good He's got square the four hit. down. Got the four got ball. Kiss, nice kiss on the one because it was going to be the middle of the end rail, it looks like. So this is setting up. The four's down, the three's near the five. Got a nice angle on the one to track for the two. I mean, he's got to go up and down the table a few times, but really, really uh, doable rack here. Two's got two pockets, I believe, anyways. I would probably just stay on the clear side. Just come one rail down and play the two by the nine. That'll bring you easily back for the three, who has that has two pockets as well. That looks perfect pace to me. Really clean transition there. Good chat, Max. Yeah, three goes by the ten and between the five ten, so he's got both pockets. It's going to be a little maneuvering from the six to the seven. I think the eight does go by the nine. It's a little tight, but. It looks like he's cutting this quite a bit. Good. Good speed. Has options on the five with the six hanging. Doesn't have to draw back. Could just stun over, play the five in the side. I think I like an angle on the six to go between the eight and nine, a couple rails to get back to the seven. I mean, that's the real decision in the rack, I think. Kind of nowhere, too. Again, he was close to it. He could have just stunned over, played the five in the side, kind of gotten near that long rail and have a natural. Now he's got to not only make a nice shot on the five, but yeah, he's not going to get really the premium, I, think, I don't think, on the, on the six. If we can grab the overhead real quick. He needs to go two rails, side rail, side rail. Okay. And just play the six and maybe go short side on the seven. Yeah, I think I'd just go between the eight and nine now. Like Since this, he got there. That's what I'm you saying. Know, yeah, side yeah, rail, yeah. side rail, yeah. and then now this, and then just go. Well, you can make a decision if you can get it back across, but if you want to. I'd just play short side that's here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, just a lot of rolling left spin. You don't have to draw off of this ball if you if you understand how to, like Efren, you know, he made a living rolling the ball with spin. Ralph yeah. UK made a living rolling the ball with spin. and. You just use a little thicker hit to get the cue ball going in the direction you need. Now, of course, if you're someone that has a little quicker tempo, this doesn't play for you quite as well because you're not going to get as much out of the English. See how his is coming shorter? He's going to have to try and go twice. And he, he got, got there. there. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, at least that was a sweater for us for some <laughs> yeah. seven or eight feet. <laughs> now you're slightly impeded by the 10, and if you have to hit downwards and then use inside spin you to come down the, the table. Bridge, too. Oh, the bridge, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Going to be a taxing shot. Yeah. The good thing is it kind of sits to where you can dig on it and come backside of the 10, and I think the 8 does go by the 9. Not the worst shot in the oh, world okay. to hit down yeah, right I'd, there. Yeah, I'd given up on that. Didn't look at it that close, but I think you're right. I think it's a more friendly way as a right-hander to use the bridge here, uh, kind of hitting down on it a little bit over the 9. You're already hitting a downward angle mm -hmm. anyways, right? Or over the 10, rather. Now this is where it's hard to see how close your tip is to the cue ball, so it doesn't help your timing on the stroke. Really one good shot away from advancing. No, he's going to play for the side. Was that intended? Not, I think so. Okay. I think so, okay. yeah. His speed wouldn't have been quite that far off. All right, just something on the light side. Take a little bit of a cut on the nine. Nice, nice shot. Yeah, real good. Probably don't go to the second rail here, especially on the 10-footer, just kind of floating to that space coming across. Oh, it seems like it's thin. No, nah, when you're close, doubt. though, you can really pinch on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So... Especially with the new felt, you can really dig on it, slow the cue ball down while actually getting some draw and roll out of it. A lot of players like that second rail, so you're coming at the 10 rather than trying to guide the speed into that good zone. Yeah, and I agree, but this one here just kind of sets up. I think you're a little flirty. Wow. <sighs> See? But again, again, that doesn't set up for, for, for Max's technique quite as much as some others, yeah. you know? So. which plays into decisions big time. A lot of people don't realize that. Look how many shots with the bridge we've had in this match. <laughs> and that's the five by 10 for you. You'd never see this many shots with the bridge on a four and a half by nine. Match ball here. Yeah, it looks. Uh, try to hit it with a lot of speed again. <sighs> Instead of smoothing it in, right? Like a roll, kind of? Hmm. Yeah, he's definitely disappointed with that effort. I think he even tried to use right English and squirt it into this. I mean, because he missed that. It didn't rattle the pocket or anything. Ooh. Yeah. The nine six. <laughs> Those four and a quarters are quite plain like four and a quarters at the moment. <laughs> the confidence level is low here for both players. Boy, that would have been a nice break and run out for Max. He got through quite a few things, but the the ball beforehand when he he didn't get past the side pocket with that, where he kind of got quick and punchy and. Uh, once it gets that near the side pocket, it's out of your control. You can scratch just as easy as not. Then there's nobody has the control to put the cue ball that close to the side pocket. So we yeah. know he miss hit it. Well, yeah, and if he was playing two rails short, it would have been a lot lighter speed to play the cut. And arguably, that's not a bad play, really. If he wanted to play above the side and, and again, just play a little less speed, he would have had an easier cut on the 10. He could reach it and everything else. Like you said, he just got a little quick. He was definitely trying to go past the side, I think, with the cue ball. Yeah. So yeah. Alex Pagaline still in it, 9-6. But everything, you know, or let's say not much of anything has been really good for Alex. The break hasn't been really good, you know, the outs, the, some of the tacticals got away. So, a lot, Missed a lot with the bridge. And yeah. every time that uh, he came to the table, he did not have much of an – he had to push out, or he had to play a rail first safe or a rail yeah. first offensive shot. He hasn't had a real good – bunch of looks I'll tell you, zero break and run outs in the match That's hard not to get on this 210 to end the match uh mark i mean you got to cheat the pocket here and come across with the draw stroke the 210 is really just a cold-blooded hanger for these players 
I would cheat it on the left side of the one. I would hit this with low left and go to the side rail to cheat this. Some people say cheat on the right side of the one, but I think that's uh, a little harder to determine where the cue ball's going. Are you, uh, so if you go on the left side of the one, are you saying bring it around three rails in between the seven and five? No, 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 low left, low left. Low oh, come just, back Just out. come one rail across, oh, you know, oh, and float in. You can play the two, 210 from a lot of places. Uh -huh. Once you get past the eight, gotcha. it's pretty golden. Okay, okay. Yeah, if you yeah. go off the right side, the ball might hydraulic. It may, it may arc a little, but low left, off the left side, cheat the hole, you're just shooting a normal shot. This may not get positioned. He's going off the right. You see how it hugged a little? Yeah. Is it going to get there? He got there. Yeah, but just... It's not easy. Just barely. <laughs> not a combination with the bridge, with the... Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying for sure. Yeah. When you're well, out you're, in the middle yeah. of the table, it's sensitive as could be. Yeah, anytime you're coming across the middle, like you said, uh, that's the one where the ball hanging can become pretty tricky. If you can anytime shoot it like a normal, more of a normal shot, cheat, cheating the pocket, it, uh, it helps. Oof. I think this is set up to where he can he can get at it, but could hit the ten into the low point. Oh, he he couldn't even shoot at it. Did he hit the eight? I, uh, I'm unclear. I guess not. So he didn't get position. He didn't get position for he the just combo. Hit. Okay, so what you said was exactly right. When you go from the center of the table to that hanging ball, when you go off the left side, the cue ball doesn't want to come back across because yeah. the momentum of the weight of the ball is on the other, going the other direction. So, well, that and it hits ball rail real quick, and it's oh my, and it's got that top spin right, so it's just gonna hydraulic a little on you. And he yeah. hit it pretty clean. Max yeah. did. It's not like he hit, over oh, hit no. it. No, he hit it nice. It he was hit it just the way he wanted to. Tough proposition. Right. That's all. And the narrow window to get position from that direction that he was coming. Yeah, it's almost similar to this here. You know, this isn't near as treacherous, but you want to smooth this out of the corner so it doesn't kind of hug on you with the two rails with the top right. You don't want to force it. You see how it hugs right there? Yeah. Because he's a player that gets into the ball a little more. So anytime you're going to have that type of technique, you know, you're going to rely on the timing being really good. He's got to work on this one. He's got some work here. Not on the three so much, but the, the rack itself. Is that going to get there? Uh, I guess he did. wasn't coming for the side. I thought he would play for the side. Just because it's such an open center to the table. He's okay, though. Now just don't get over the eight. Yeah, he's getting quick. And quick with it. Now here's another tricky little position play. The weight of the cue ball is going the wrong direction. Now you got to pick the right amount of backspin for the right thickness that you hit this and the right speed. So Alex is just going to go roll with right, take a long five. Careful with the eight. Watch the eight right here. You know yeah. when you're struggling, you know the eight for sure is getting involved. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. It's just, One way or another, right? It's inevitable. You're going to be slightly jacked up. Something's going wrong. You just can't get free of it. It's like the balls conspire against you. Now he's got to trickle this ahead about eight inches and just take the cut on the six. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, you know, I've talked to players a lot of times and not, not just, you know, pro players, all kinds of players and but I talk about the pros that there are some players that are very aware of their swing and understand their swing. And whenever they're struggling in a match, they can recognize what they did. Yeah. You know, and then there's some players that just practice and say, oh, man, this, this is the one. This is the one that feels good. Let me keep practicing that. But in the midst of a match, mm -hmm. when they start to have a few things go wrong, they can't quite figure out technically what, what's the situation, yeah. you know. And so I've always liked the player that that has a little knowledge about their swing and can recognize when and why a flaw is maybe happening here and there. Three rail kick behind it. Bad hit. Eight ball goes in the pocket. Yeah, I got a funny feeling the way this is going. We may, we may get to a hill hill match oh. from nowhere. We've had some ebbs and flows of momentum for sure.
Just have to get three balls from here with ball in hand. Something's way wrong. Well, you can tell, though, he's looking at it quickly. Said, well, look, right? at he got straight. I mean, we know that's not where he wanted to be. Well, yeah, I know, but whenever you stress, you worry about straight right here because now you got to go forward and take a little more of a shot. But, I mean, if you're thinking correctly and confident, that little more of a shot is nothing. Like you always say, no. what if your opponent left you here? Right. You would right, love it, right? right? So, oh, you'd feel great about it. But then yeah. when you leave yourself there, you're agonizing, like, I should have never been here. I should have had that hint of an angle. But, no, just go ahead and shoot this in. Roll the head of foot. That's all you have to do. But I always felt back in the day, you know, he even overran this one, Jeremy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to be on this Yeah, side, this is the bad side because it, it doesn't work well for the nine. But <laughs> He knows he's struggling. Yeah. Now he's going to have to play position, I think, to go three rails. No, he's he's going it. forward. He's going to bump gonna, it ahead. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, you got to be single-minded about pocketing the seven. Don't worry about bumping in the head. Yeah, uh -oh. this is what happens. Uh -oh. No, this is exactly what happens when you start bumping in the head. You're, you take your get split-minded. Yeah. Well, and the here's again. Ball in hand, he got two balls. Well, I gave you ball in hand. You had one. You know. You get nothing. You, you got to get three. I got to ask your opinion, though. When, like when you were playing your best. When I was playing my best, of course, I didn't want to have to do it all the time. But I almost, like, loved having to shoot some tough shots and recover here and there. It almost was like a good feeling kind of thing. Yeah. Like I was, you get hyped for it, right? Of course, you don't want to do it all the time again. Yeah. You know, but here and there, it's, it's uh, I think, something that could bode well for a player. Dang, he got a lot out of that. So he one, did. One little soft one. And, again, this is where I look at, oh, I can bounce all the way up to the spot area and still have a yeah. nice cut shot. And so. what you said, he, he got a lot out of it. Actually, he got more than he used to because that was actually a smooth stroke. He yeah. didn't punch it. you know, and Went, the, went the 10 inches got, through kept, the ball, too. Yeah. Got that giddy up on there from that good delivery. Well, what happens is it just rolls out so much better because there's no nothing wasted, really. Wow. Can't believe that. Boy. Cannot believe that. So he's traveling the cue ball 30 feet, hoping that it, nothing. You get goes. a little bump. Oh, oh, look at this. That's ugly. He's going to have to two rail this away, isn't he? Oh, boy. I don't know. He's thinking about, he wants to kick it in. But yeah, it's awfully it's a, close to that rail. <laughs> it's a 10 foot table and you're a, a diamond away. Now it's probably not frozen, which gives you a hint of a margin of error, but. Boy, you hate to go down uh, like this. Yeah, your opponent's struggling. you got to two rail this to the other rail, other end rail. Well, sometimes you punish yourself for playing bad position. You know, so here <laughs> you make yourself go for it. Just get it over with. You better go soft. Nope. Uh, he didn't go for it. He, he got in between and just going to pace it in there. That's not the shot for that. Oh, man, Alex, another life. From nowhere. 9 7. Okay, Alex wants to take a timeout. Let's see, but whose break is it? Ricky's it's saying. It's Max's, okay, yeah. so then he can't take a timeout. No, which I think is, you know, I don't mind either way, actually. Yeah. I, the one thing, I, the reason to take a Time out is for Max to think about the last two games while you're here playing. You know, it's kind of like, oh man, I let this slip away. Now I'm only two games in front. And it gives chance for Alex to kind of calm down. And after this break, if uh, it's Alex's turn, he still may take that time out. Well, there's some of that gamesmanship, right? Yeah. Of course, trying to put your, well, and you your wanna... opponent. Now, Max could have won this match already a couple times, so. Uh... The last two wrecks. Here's our TPA break performance, our BPA break performance, excuse me. Break hasn't been that bad, hasn't produced a ton of shots, really, uh, overall. I'd say, you know, just looking at it without looking at the numbers, just the eye test, I'd say Max has probably been a little the best, better breaker overall, even though he's had two scratches. Yeah, Max broke and ran out and missed the 10 with the bridge. And then this game, uh, tried to play position on the 10 and did not get it. Looks like he got a shot here on the 1, though. Yeah, the 1 you're Thin definitely cut. supposed to go at. 
I think he can hit this with a rolling right English and come to the short side on the two. It looks pretty natural to me. Now again, when you're someone that has a little quicker tempo, the rolling ball with a little spin isn't necessarily your most comfortable shot. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when it's a little thin and it's, and it's you know can be a little taxing if you miss. Less problems if you overcut when you miss than undercut. If you undercut, a lot of times it hangs up there. Yeah, the table's still got a little slide effect, though. So, again, if he gets a good stroke, he puts a little more pace on the object ball. I think he opens the pocket up. Yeah, again, not letting the English transfer. So, it's just kind of grabbing the ball more than throwing the object ball. Yeah, and it's funny because it's really, when I worked with Max, it was really all we worked on really was the timing is all he needed. Make sure he doesn't miss that pause with the cue ball, which he's had some of that here as well. Because a lot of people, you know, they get it, they get really involved with straight with when it comes to the stroke, and they don't understand that straight is great and all, but timing is the real engine. That's the one that really gets things done in the swing is the transfer and the transition yeah. and everything. And not only that, that keeps your stroke straighter. It's when you get jerky, yeah. you start to clinch, and it goes Go left distorts, and right and everything right. else. A great kick safe, uh, kick and stick right there. Bag your line. It's not completely dead here. Oh, nice hit. It's going to serve up a shot. And a good one. Big stretch here. I don't know if it's the bridge again. Now, can he get enough follow with the bridge to get through there to get to that gap on the 510? I think so. It's a little touchy with the bridge, though. Looks like that's what he was thinking about. He went and looked at it. Yeah, that's here. the most conservative route. Yeah, just don't baby it too much. Make sure you get a little follow on it. Yeah, like that. Nice shot. Now, if he gets really good here, he can leave the four right where the nine ball's at when he plays this combination, and then it transfers easily or easier to the five. If you get funny here, though, that becomes treacherous to play. And he's a little short. I think it'll be okay, though. And now he's got to make a pure hit on this combination for the four ball to just stick there. Very doable, and then he just two cushion down to the side rail, end rail. He's even looking at bumping the six up with this shot. Why would you do that? This is a Just, little, there's a hair cut here. I mean, this not this four could fall to the right for sure. No, that's why I'm saying it naturally. If he goes a right-hand spin, because he's definitely going to protect that four ball. That's top priority. Well, Unless he's should, playing the four well, ball purposely down I mean, table. you got to dink this in then. If you try to move the six, I don't, I mean, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's okay. Moving yeah. balls. Yeah. I don't know if it is okay. He got it? there. He's got there. Ooh. <laughs> Minor heart palpitations when that six ball trickles up like that. But I understand. Mm. You understand about the five, right? It's a little tricky to get to the six. Do but where, where the four was, though, if you play nice and tidy on the four, yeah. it's pretty good to get on the five to get to the six. Rather well, I think than he just came balls. short on the four, though, was the issue. Yeah. And then he was thinking about, well, I could improve this. If I move that six up, that's going to make getting the five to the six. But now he might not even quite have enough to get to the four. You can see he's down looking at it. If he has to twirl this, then your speed control can go all to pieces. Oh, he's able to roll it. Okay, good shot. Good shot. Get the cue ball off the rail. Now he can get to the bottom of the cue ball. Now he can do whatever he needs to do here. Not suggesting that it's easy or routine. I'm just saying that it's far more doable. Yeah, and that's what I kind of felt like, just leave the six and, uh, you know, try and get as good on the four as he can to get premium on the five. But, of course, Alex sees so much, right? Well, and I think it wasn't, uh, it wasn't initially in the plan, but when he got thin, he thought, well, I can maybe move that six from here. I'm, it's going to be kind of tracking that way if I use running English. It's going to bump the six. Pretty nice shot there. Didn't get perfect. Still some work to do. He scratches his head, smiles. 
Mm. Yeah, he wanted another foot or foot and a half out mm -hmm. of the cue ball, so. Well, you just have to work through these racks. Uh, sometimes the balls do not go where you want them to. Yeah, that caught pretty thick to the pocket. But that there. was to help bend the cue ball back up over here one more else. Mm -hmm. It's heating up here. Nine, yeah. nine to eight. And Oop. Alex will break. Does he take the time out? I think he does. Yeah. When you miss two ten balls, bad things happen here late in the match. You know that. Yeah, and there was actually a couple of little others as well, but uh, it was funny. Kind of got through the work and then made a little bit of odd decisions. Maybe one odd decision and then a couple strokes he'd like to have had back or this match would have been over. All right, now we're waiting on Mad Max. Get back to the Thunderdome here. Nine to eight. Yeah. We got action. Yes, sir. Well, you said it earlier. This has some, it was like nine to five or nine to six. You said this could go nine, nine. I'm thinking, I don't think so. Yeah. But here we are. We're just a game away from that. Well, that first and last one, hard to get. And Max has had a few little, you know, Hiccups here trying to get but it done. Both players, uh, Alex tried to go real first on the nine down here and gave one away here late in the match, too. Remember when he got yeah. flat? And... Yeah, he, he elected to play the eight and work the cue ball rather than just lay up. He caught that nine ball, at, and, you know, Murphy's Law, of course. He fell dead straight. That's a little unlucky, but, you know. And right before that happened, I said, you just got to take care on this five ball. You can't, just because you made two good shots. You, and sure enough, he bumped it and then... Things got weird. And well, now a dry break. The 310, you know, locked up there at the spot mm -hmm. in the racking area. So the two's near, though. So maybe something you can produce there. But the one, not easy. Now you just come over and try and lock them behind the seven. Come across the one with a rolling right English here. Uh, the yeah, one's going to come up about the middle diamond, maybe a little off the rail. It's always sensitive when you're moving both balls. Yeah, but you got so much cover with the six, seven, and eight. You know, I mean, like this is one that these types of players are supposed to really have good cue ball control coming behind the seven. This is about a half a ball hit coming across it with some right English. Now he decided to try and stun the one to take care of the one, where I'm not too worried about the one. The one's just going to roll up again about the middle of that side rail there, trying to utilize that six, seven, eight. He wanted to get a little more cover with the one, which is understandable. And again, at the technique, rolling across it with English maybe isn't so favorable for him. He doesn't mm -hmm. feel that as, as well as others. All right, Alex wants to shoot this in, come one rail just above. He'd like to get a little angle off the two to maybe come one rail into that 310. Oh, he's stunning here. I think, anyways. So that's a sign of a not very confident player at the moment that wants to stun that instead of just level out, hit a high ball, and come one rail between the, the five and three with the cue ball. Or at least let's say that's the feeling I get sometimes, mm -hmm. Mark, whenever no, I'm not no as confident. Question. Yeah. Now Max, uh, you know, I don't know if he can see enough of the one. Looks like he might be able to. But what could you possibly do to get decent on the two from here? That's not going to be easy. Yeah, he snookered on the make for sure. Oh, he can't make yeah, it. Yeah, he's he's going to try and cut it and draw it and kind of hold the cue ball on that end as that best as possible. That might be better anyway than trying to go down and shooting a, something that has no value. He may have made it. No. Hard to believe he's coming backwards from this distance. Kind of believe it's going forward. Better smooth. Sure. Yeah, that was way better. That's why he got so much out of the cue ball. He wouldn't have minded just tickling the 10 and slowing the cue ball down a little bit and dislodging the 3 there. Now what? And get above it. 
you know, and play a safety. And Well, you might want to play a safety right here then. That way, if you fail on the safety, they still have the 310 to save you. But no, he's going to. Yeah, I think waiting. you're supposed to try and take the take the safety on. Can he wrap the corner inside the five? You know, to come two rails off the left side of the three inside the five, but and then go behind the four eight off the third rail. Yeah, but also the, you're letting the three go over by the nine when you do that. If, yeah, when you hit it that thin. But he's still got to make a hell of a shot, right? Yeah. I mean, if you play it, I mean. I was almost thinking about maybe is there a way to bank the ten back and ah. play the cue ball. But um, you can't go naked at it. So, no, he's looking at your shot. He's I'll tell you what, he could chip the, the three doing so, too, and come along three rails up behind the eight and four yeah. and use the six as well. So doesn't have to wrap the corner. Maybe playing your shot here, some type of ten ball action. Good job there. Look at that. Opened everything up, got distance, and there's nothing down there to play safe behind. Yeah, the four's a little off angle with the combination, so you may just have to try and get him behind the seven here, leaving some distance if not. Shot you should work on, that's for sure. You you don't yeah. want to clip it. You want to let the three come up a little bit. That way you're leaving a tough shot. You don't want it over the pocket. And then just kind of let the cue ball kind of coast towards the six, two cushions. I mean, that's all you can do. When you cut that three, it picks up contact and do side spin, so you have to overcut it if you want to get past the five, bringing it down. Oh, he's going ten. Ooh, how do you do? Was that Looks the, like it's okay. Man, the triple Lindy, huh? The bank triple combination. <laughs> the triple Lindy. I love that guy, Rodney Dangerfield. I love that guy. I could just sit there and listen to him talk. He just makes me laugh. Is this a bigger than the six now? Yeah, pretty easy one, too, and... The three's going to track across towards the 10. He's got to keep a little control on it. Which means he's going to have to go soft speed. Or yeah. would the, the other choice would be high velocity, but it's not laying right. The no, the high velocity yeah. makes the six missable. The three will get across. He probably gets out from here. Right? As long as he doesn't baby it too much. Oh, he wow. overcut it. Too thin. Yeah, missed it on the side. It didn't look like it's missable on. Not yeah. too bad. Not too bad. Didn't sell out. Not an easy safety. No. Might have to kick at this. Oh, we lost everything. Yeah. Everything's out. I don't know. We shall proceed. Yeah, I may have to kick behind this. This looks like it could... Oh, okay. smart shot, Max. Smart shot. Hello, five ball. He didn't want to bring the three across to open up the pocket, so really good. Good really job good. to introduce the five, too. Ooh, this is ugly here. Man, he can't kick past the side on the long rail here towards well, some he, congestion. He wants to save the four ball. He wants to go off the end rail here. Not. Yeah. I think the four might go, though. Well, let's see what happens here. We shook the dice and did not turn out favorably. Okay. Could he use the seven ball to billiard in? Yeah, he tried to billiard the four ball with the seven. That wasn't a bad idea. We've lost all audio here, it sounds like. You guys can hear us. Okay. A couple. Uh, okay, we're getting it. There we go. He tried to billiard into the four ball there. It didn't work out. Now he's got a super thin cut to make a hit, and he was able to score that ball. Two big-time shots. Yeah, and I tell you, that shot there almost forced him to be smooth, and that was really delicate. And that was a, a lot better shot than people might give credit right, right there. Yeah. Right, you can definitely follow on that 10 ball there. Absolutely. Now he's got to stay smooth again here to get into position and across. 
That'll work. It's going to be important the seven, though. You can see the eight doesn't pass the ten unless he mm -hmm. wants to play a combo, and he's got to get proper on the eight for the corner, but also to get on the nine to get back on the ten. Of course, this shot on the six will tell us if he's going to play that combination on the eight, most likely, depending on where he gets on the seven. Well, you prefer to not play the combination if you can get on the eight in the corner. That would yeah, be here, but yeah. you might not lend itself for that. Wow, where's he drawn to? If he's trying to get to that side route rail, watch out for the side pocket. He's trying to kill it. Okay. So this tells me combinations coming on the eight ten. Don't think he'll take this on in the corner. Just roll it in the side and and uh, you know rely on your talent. That combination is not so tough. And it looks like he should get off the rail and on a pretty good line, huh, Mark? He might even be able to just stop. Now he's going forward. Yeah, I think there's a little more angle, so okay. he can get really good on the combo. Just again, the same thing a little quick and just not getting the contact on the object ball. Something consistent. Now this is, I don't think you can just draw straight back. You'd have to go to the side rail and off to play the eight ball over here on the other side rather than play the combination. Yeah, this is all about just getting to where you can about the middle diamond at the most, I guess. He got to the third diamond, which is fine. And, of course, we always want to see hill hole matches, but, you know, we don't want to see a player struggle trying to win. So feeling a little unfortunate for, for Max at the moment, but. This little thinner hit lends itself to get to the nine easily, so that makes this eight ball play a little easier psychologically because you're comfortable. You just roll it. And... Okay. Great shot there. Now it's very, very doable. Go on the hill for Alex Bagulian. Tie the score nine games apiece. Max Eberle to break. Decision game. <laughs> Here we go. It's our first one that takes us to the maximum amount. But I'm sure we'll see more. Maybe today in this Bigfoot as the tournament continues. See our TPA will kind of just, you know, not the best for the guys. Those air numbers are, are something you're not ever going to see very often. Uh, so, mm -mm. so we'll just, uh, again, got to show you the stats uh, when it's good and sometimes when it's not so good. But whoever gets through this can kind of erase that. Maybe try and get a little time on this table if they can it some moment or another before they play their second round. The break's been there for Max the second half of the match. He's just got to close the door. Mm -hmm. Look at that rack track by the National Beard Academy. Five in a row yeah. from 9-4 down. An interesting match for sure. Five and the eight right behind the one. Oh. Uh. Just as he started the match with that same type of scratch, may end the match doing that. We'll see. But look at this one. I don't know that it has a pocket here. He can squeeze right? it by the eight for sure. Okay. I think he can squeeze it by the nine, the six also. He's just got to use the rail it's, a little bit. Yeah. Then the three is in kind of a, not a very comfortable place. Interesting. Alex is taking a look at all of it. Now, one thing I'm, I'm curious with Ricky with that towel, I would hope there's no product on that towel. It's just a nice, clean, clean towel overall. The reason why I say that is if there's a little product, that could, that could be something the players aren't quite so used to sometimes because it does tend to play a little slicker, deflect a little bit differently. Oh, he's bumping the two here, trying to use the pocket. Don't overcut this, trying to bump the two. Okay, he didn't. Uh, he needs the point to help him. Oh. 
<laughs> for sure disappointed about that. Now he's got the awkward safety to play. Uh, he's got a long uh, rail bank, too, that's enticing. Two to, two to right does go by the five. Uh, Don't think he's going to play that. I think it'll be the four on the, the three on the side rail, cue ball one row behind the seven, just yeah. kind of coast behind the seven. And if you don't get all the way, you still have the ten as a blocker over there. So yeah. That's no, pretty conservative. No jump cues, right? So this is mainly just play the three. Let's get the three. Oh, he went down to, oh, even better. Yeah, he went now longer with it. Three balls with it and long range and a tough position, even if he says leave a shot. And it's more the shot you would play with the no jump cue rule versus the jump cue rule, right? Yeah. yeah. The other one, you may play more side rail, side rail with the cue ball behind the seven. All right, can't miss this kick. Good thing about this one, I don't think there's enough room there isn't. So, really, I mean, you would have to judge this way off to miss it. I'd bet a lot of money against this one. Well, it's the first shot. It's the trickiest one. Yeah. Alex, I mean, uh, Mark, just dealing with this nine ball, trying to navigate off of it. Can he hit it with right or rolling right and get enough of the nine to where he'll never get snookered? It, it, you can't tell because of how thick or thin you enter the pocket. Sometimes they bank from here, too, just to take the nine out of the equation altogether. Wow. Yeah. Was that ball not cuttable? No, it was definitely cuttable. It was the nine ball was the issue, and he wasn't mm -hmm. sure. He thought the bank lay good enough that he wasn't going to miss it. See? But that's why I say that he, sometimes they bank from here. Uh, but really this is a 5 by 10 and he really he didn't really rattle the pocket with that one. It wasn't that close. So That was pretty shocking to me, though, he banked that. I mean, this is Hill Hill, and, you know, unless you really thought you were going to get snookered. You know, it's one thing to not get the prime position you want, but you can't leave the table on a miss when you have... Well, where it was laying from my vantage point, the nine was tracking towards the four. So I think the snooker was a possibility, depending upon how the object ball entered the pocket. And he just thought the the bank took away all those issues if he makes the bank. Yeah, no, so. I get it. But I just feel like there was more risk um, on the bank than there was the snooker. Uh, now what's happened there? You know. got thin. Look at this. Yeah, this isn't that hard. The only problem here is, again, that depending on what part of the pocket, you could miss it, I guess. You you just don't want to sliver the six as you go by. You want to hit this nice and easy. Did you say nice and easy? He said heck with easy. <laughs> Did you say nice and easy, Jeremy? <laughs> that was, yeah. good Lord, that was like a forty five caliber went off in his hand. Yeah, and, you know, this is something I talk to Skylar about sometimes. Um, you know, when the nerves get high, mm -hmm. you can really get in that, oh, let me just make the ball mode. And yeah. that's not how professional players really get about things. You know, you play the shot itself. You're not yeah. really worried about the ball. And once you start getting in that make your ball mode, everything's going to get a little quicker, you know, a little more stabby. <laughs> Alex is smiling. Look at this. Worst possible place I could get. Everything else is so much more controllable. Now, it's still plenty doable. He's just going to dice this in, bring the cue ball to the center of the table. But He might go three rails here. I don't, I don't think, think so. He, but no, I don't think he wants to just center of the table here. If the nine wasn't there, he definitely goes three oh, He's rails. doing it. He's yeah. going all the way. Now, he may fall underneath this. It's awkward if it gets all the way to the end rail. Golly. Almost. <laughs> He's smiling, too. He does. Good Lord. And once again, the absolute worst place. Yeah, another another inch would have hurt, too. I mean, there is another inch there. But the only thing here is really not the make. But is the cue ball going to go into the 10? Is he going to catch a little piece of the 9 somewhere? Does he go around the 10 easily? He's not missing this, that's for sure. This oh. is the worry right there. Okay. He's okay. <laughs> now, just one more bridge shot tonight, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's so ironic. Just one more one, bridge shot. So ironic that the bridge is the one coming out here to really <laughs> essentially end the match. He has to hate it. <laughs> well, this is a good reason to practice with the bridge, everybody. No matter who you are. Well, of course... So many fans. I'm 
big fan of Alex Pagelin. Of course, I'm a fan of Mad Max. But I'd hate to see Max with a loss like this. I hope he can shake it off and continue uh, confidently in the main events. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, he's like, I make sure I get this down. Match ball. And Pagulai will move on. <laughs> Winning ugly, but moving on. It all looks like a line drive in the box score tomorrow. All right, this has been an AccuStats video presentation. Any rebroadcast or republication without AccuStats express written consent is prohibited. That is our time for this time. So long for just a while.